um, personnel. But um, this is um, Andrea Holmes. I'm the Retirement Plan Administrator. And as some of you already may know or heard that the Navajo Nation President's Office proposed a um, they were calling it our early retirement plan, but it's actually an enhanced retirement program that um, the Navajo Nation Retirement Office has been um, working on. And in this enhanced retirement program, it was because um, of the coronavirus 19 that it really affected some of our uh, Navajo Nation employees of retirement age, which is 60 and above. So we were looking and we researched some of the money and the amount of the eligible employees that could take advantage of this enhanced retirement program. So I was requesting a work session to go over um, a PowerPoint presentation with um, Willis Towers Watson who is our actuary, and we've been um, going through this um, since July last year. Uh, and our PAC um, passed the, re the resolution to um, do this enhanced retirement program on um, January 20 29th. So before it goes to Budget and Finance Committee, I'm requesting the work session on February 23rd at 10 o'clock so um, we can get a better understanding of our whole purpose and to introduce you to this enhanced retirement program. Ebony, yeah, I wanted to um, make this request to Budget and Finance Committee. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Kella. Ms. Holmes, for uh, just providing the little uh, overview of why that request is made. So with that, committee members, we do have uh, one amendment number one on our agenda is to add an action item to a new business, which is a work session request. Uh, with that, if there's no questions or comments regarding this request, and we'll get more information on it during uh, the work session uh, next Tuesday. So with that, I'll ask the call for the questions from the back. Don't get Jimmy over here. How about Green? Yeah, they've been out. She's for the record. She's not uh, young. Yelling her books, Green. She's not uh, Vice Chair Smith. Green. Okay, for the record, Vice Chair Smith votes Green. I don't see not uh, young. Amber Kinesbaugh uh, Crowdy. Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crowdy votes Green. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for the record, she's not uh, young. Amber Kinesbaugh Crowdy votes Green. I don't see not uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Uh, for the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Uh, Delegate Elder P. Begay. Oh, this is uh, green. Okay, for the record, Delegate Elmer P. Begay votes green. Uh, for the uh, vote tally, we do have five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting for amendment number one. Uh, back to the main motion. Any other questions or comments, committee members? I have to know, yeah, with one amendment. Um, uh, I'll call for the questions. And uh, I'll get Jimmy Healy here. Uh, vote green. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good, Shana, for the record. Uh, I'll get Jimmy Healy here. Vote green. Uh, this, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Yeah, I'll just run to Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty. Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty votes green. Thank you. Okay, for the record, Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty votes green. I'll just run to Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Okay. okay. For the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Vote green. Christina, for the record, Delegate Elmer P. Begay votes green. 
Uh, back going back up, Mr. Nada, Vice Chair Smith. <coughs> no, Vice Chair Smith. Again, for the record, we do have four in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Uh, Vice Chair Smith not voting also. Uh, now we do have our agenda before us. And uh, moving forward, the, the, uh, uh, item four, review and adopt a journal. There's none. Item five, receiving reports, A, updates, uh, presented by Mr. Jesse Delmar, Division Director for uh, Naval Public Safety, and uh, Philip Francisco, Chief of Police. And uh, Mr. Leonard Renhorse, I, with the Naval Division of Public Safety. Uh, so with that, Mr. Delmar, are you on the line with us? If not, I'll defer to Chief Francisco. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Chair, uh, Chief, uh, just, Chief just a reminder, yes. star six, star six oh, yes, to get on the six. call. If you're muted, Chair. star six. Chair. Yes. Chair. Yes. yes. This is Chief Francisco, yes, can you hear me? Is, uh, okay. I heard Chief Mr. Francisco. Mr. Is, uh, is this uh, Mr. Delmar? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay, we got now, hold geez. Um, okay, yeah, I'll answer the report. Okay, thank uh, you, Chair. The right I was uh, apparently muted uh, from your side, sir. I, I was trying to talk to you that you know I was here. And, um, Oh, Vice Chair, the, the, the yeah, Budget and right, Finance right. Committee, uh, so yeah, well, they have been there. Um, Can you hold on? Uh, Mr. Francisco, I mean, Chief Penn, uh, Mr. Delmar, can somebody mute their yes, phone, sir. please, in the background? We can hear you being in Shiprock somewhere. Hear me. Uh, yeah. Hello, can you meet your phone, please? Uh, Chairman Henio, their last three digits are one eight. <coughs> Chairman Henio. Yes. yes. Uh, this is Thomas Walker. Oh. <clears throat> they, um, okay, uh, Chairman, though, um, Budget and Finance Committee members, Chairman, Ado, uh, Shadado, Snakai, Ado, um, Paka, Natjahagi, though, and then everyone that's on the call. The, um, legislation, uh, a, 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 she, Nakaba, not Ido, they could be now, Bahol Jijo, a court. Suspension of floor rules that's a legislation Otherwise, uh, <clears throat> all data is in the hard or let on the law. Ladies, do is in the start of the kitchen. This day up now, can't eat the chair. Thank you. I can see you last night. Go get Walker. Good on. Being a committee member. Sure, can you? Vice Chair. Good. 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 Shania had the suspend for rules. A nasto dot ash zero zero nine dash two one. Beninado, you case in the Najagi reports call a B dot so set by legislation. A petitioner. Yeah. A gushina is just motion. Bend the floor rules. Go to. Uh, to go to uh, new business, uh, Vice Chair Smith. 
There are two items on new business uh, A's legislation 009-21. Adopt BAI is just a, a motion to request for a work session. It's ASA or just uh, legislation only. Is she done with the legislation there? Yeah. With that, uh, second by uh, Elmer P. Gates, motion to suspend the floor rules to <clears throat> go to new business item 7A only. I don't even know. We'll move forward. What's that? So, with that, committee members, any questions or comments regarding suspension of floor rules? Right, then now y'all call for the question. Uh, so that delegate Jimmy over here. Oh, vote green. Thank you. Uh, Christina, for the record, vice uh, delegate Jimmy over here votes green. Uh, so that vice chair Smith. Agree. Hey, for the record, vice chair Smith votes green. Other so that delegate Ember Kanespa Karate. Uh, Chairman Henio, I apologize. I got dropped off. I just rejoined. Can you let me know what we're voting on? Okay, what happens is there's a motion by Vice Chair Smith uh, to suspend the flow rules at the request of uh, uh, Shananda Delegate Thomas Walker to entertain his legislation, uh, new business item A, uh, legislation 0009 21, uh, before we go to the reports uh, so he could um, uh, be with his uh, committee, RDC, okay. and Thank second by Delegate Elvin P. Begay. Okay, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, Delegate Amber Cadence Bob Crotty votes green. Thank you. Uh, with that, <clears throat> we do have for the record Delegate Amber Cadence Bob Crotty votes green. Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Okay, for the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Delegate Amber Cadence Bob Crotty votes green. green. Uh, for the record, They'll get Elmer P. B. Gable with screen. Uh, do it. With that, we have a vote of five in favor, uh, zero opposed, turn out voting. I uh, motion carry to suspend the flow rules. Uh, with that, uh, committee members will go to item 7A, new business legislation 0009 21. Uh, Peggy, would you read that legislation to the record for us? Yes, Chair. Uh, this legislation, um, legislation 9-21, uh, was sent to the committee on February 5th. Um, so when we, I'm looking for it right now on my system. I lost it for, let's see, hold on. Okay, it's legislation number, this is a proposed Navination Council resolution, 24th Navination Council, third year, 2021. It went from Resources and Development Committee, thence Budget and Finance Committee, and Budget and Finance Committee has final authority on this. Introduced by Thomas Walker, Jr., prime sponsor, tracking number 0009-21, an action relating to Resources and Development and Budget and Finance Committees, approving a change in project type in resolution number CAP 3518, amending the project type to add quote, construct and or purchase, end quote, for the Coal Mine cha Canyon Chapter building. This has a, the uh, attached exhibits are there, the change forms, and uh, they're all signed and in order. And then the Legislative Council memo, the Internet Public Review has no comments. Then the Resources and Development Committee has a due pass with no amendments, and there's a vote vote tally sheet as well, Mr. Chair. Uh, Kashina, I can't look for that reading. Uh, committee members, is there a motion? Motion, Delegate Elmer PBG. Motion is on. Delegate Elmer PBG motions. Is there a second? Vice Chairman. Motion and a second by Vice Chair Smith. So, uh, motion by Sananda Delegate Elmer P. B. Gay. 
I'm second by Sananta, uh, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, committee members, any questions or comments? Mr. Chair? Yes. This is Peggy. Um, Peggy. As you know, as you know, the um, Cicilla, uh Raymond Smith had sponsored a legislation to extend the um, CAP 3518 uh, expenditure plans for two years, for an additional two years. And then with that, he also changed the process in approving and amending changes to those projects. So I wanted to have the Legislative Council provide some advisement on how that applies to this legislation, if that's okay, okay. with you. I could say, yeah, no, that, that is a really good point um, because it's been signed into law by President Nez. So with that, Ms. Kristen Lowe, um, what's the new process that we are looking at right now? Chair, it's Kristen. Um, I'm having trouble with my internet right now, so I can't pull anything up. Um, I don't have that information off the top of my head, unfortunately. I don't know um, if DOJ wants to weigh in on that, or I can hopefully find the document, the legislation that was signed by the president right now. That's all I can offer. I'm so sorry. Okay, with that, uh, Ajua, do you have anything to add to this conversation? Uh, Department of Justice? Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Okay, apologies. Good morning. Oh. Go ahead, oh, excuse me. Apologies, Chair. I was saying that I, like Kristen, I'm trying to pull up the document, and so I do not have anything to offer at the moment. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. Um, committee members, um, it seems like there is uh, a change in the process because there was also a change in the the uh, the law regarding uh, CAP 3518 that was amended, amendments that were made, and at the present time, our attorneys, uh, Chief of Legislative Council and Department of Justice cannot provide any sort of guidance on this process, change in the processes that uh, were made within the legislation. And so, therefore, it puts the committee in a position where uh, this, it might be difficult to just simply pass it as we used to do in the past because uh, the legislation has been signed into as part of the law now. And so, therefore, uh, deferring back to the committee, what's the committee's wishes? Okay, I'll get on with you again. Uh, I don't know how long the um, DOJ or um, the state council to um, get the information. Um, the internet, I guess it's based on the internet, and uh, they were both they both uh, stated that they have any issues with internet trying to pull up the document. So timeline, uh, Kristen, what what kind of timeline would you offer to uh, provide us uh, feedback? Uh, who's who's saying, Mr. Chair? This is Robert Willie. Oh, Mr. Willie, maybe you can help us out. Um, good afternoon, or good morning, sir, and members of the Budget and Finance Committee. I think the resolution you're talking about is CJA. Dash zero three dash twenty one, which extended the timelines from two years to or from twenty four months to forty. Yes, yes, that's the one.
What was the citation on that, please? CJA S03 21. Uh, back to Kristen, how, how much time would you need to um, provide uh, a response to the committee? Uh, let me see if the internet, let me see if my internet will cooperate with me. Um, it's just sort of beyond my control at this point. Understand. Um, let's, let me, let me see if I can, um, reset and sort this out in about 10 minutes or so. Okay. Uh, committee members, I'm repeating Gage, she's trying to get her internet moving and, um, she's taking maybe about 10 minutes. Brother, this, brother, this is Delgate get yellow here. Uh, uh, they'll get yellow can, here. Wait, can you repeat legislation number? Uh, all I hear is CJA dash zero three dash two one. CJA dash zero three. Good, good uh, morning, Chair, Mr. Chair. I, I actually got kicked out. This is Robert Willie again. I, I I called back in. I'm not sure where I got kicked out. At. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, you mentioned that you stopped at um, uh, naming the legislation, and that's okay. you cut out. Okay. Um, may I continue? Sure. Okay. That that resolution CJA dash zero three dash twenty one um, extended the completion dates from the twenty four months to the forty eight months um, for CAP thirty five dash eighteen, and that's all that resolution was doing. I'm not sure if you want me to try sending this to. Um, Kristen and Adjua, I'm not sure if there's internet problems. I don't know if they'll still have the same problem, but I do have a copy of it with me currently, Mr. Chair. So, Mr. Willie, I was saying is that it just it just extended the dates, uh, but not the process. Uh, that's what it looks Chair. like to me, Mr. Okay. Chair. Okay, this is Mr. Willie, for your input. Thank Chair. you for your input, Mr. Hold on, hold on. Thank you for your input, Mr. Willie. Uh, and uh, I'm sure the committee has has uh, heard that too, also. So back to uh, the committee members and uh, go ahead. Sure, members of the committee, I did send you that CJA three dash twenty one um, in section three on page four. It does say that rules and regulations duly delegated and adopted thereby. Um, it says that the nation, the council, it had two two things on it. It says um, section four, and I sent it to Kristen too, and also Edua. So I don't know if they got that. Uh, I was able to. This is Kristen. I was able to pull the legislation up. Thank you. Okay, Kristen, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, Chair. So essentially, the um, project change, there's looks like two processes. The approval of the Resources and Development Committee and the Budget and Finance Committee, or through rules and regulations duly delegate, delegated and adopted, thereby as long as such project has been certified as construction ready by CPMD or NTUA. So essentially, the rules and regulations that are, will be adopted by the Resources and Development Committee and the Budget and Finance Committee, that hasn't been done yet. But once that is approved, that's an alternative process. However, Delegate Walker's legislation is properly before the Budget and Finance Committee and is another means to effectively change the projects as he has requested for his chapter, Chair, members of the committee. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ajo, I mean, um, Kristen, for that uh, explanation. So back to the committee member, committee, Budget and Finance Committee. Any further questions or comments? It seems that we are in order at the present time. <clears throat> uh, then I, uh, I'll call for the question. 
Uh, Sinatah, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Uh, Sinatah, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Uh, Sinatah, Vice Chair Smith. Have a, have a plane, Delegate For the record, Delegate Yellowhair was green. Uh, Sinatah, Vice Chair Smith. Green. Uh, Vice Chair Smith? Vote, vote green. Green, okay. For the record, Vice Chair Smith votes green. Uh, this is not, uh, Delegate Amber Kanesba Crotty. Uh, Delegate Amber Kanesba Crotty votes green. Thank you. Okay. For the record, Delegate Amber Kanesba Crotty votes green. Uh, this is not, uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Uh, Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. Okay, thank you. For the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Uh, Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Yeah, I vote green. Okay, for the record, Delegate Elmer P. Begay votes green. Uh, we do have a vote a tally of five in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Uh, 0009-21 receives a due pass. Uh, with that, Sunita. Uh, Motion privilege, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, question of privilege. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Legislative Council. Question of privilege, uh, committee members, is do we have to, or should we uh, revamp the uh, procedure for any upcoming changes under the uh, CAP 35-18? Is that uh, recommended or we can just continue using the same uh, procedures that we have regarding the uh, change on the uh, projects within the uh, CAP 35-18? The reason why I'm asking that is if, if we do need to change it, then that's got to be with RDC and also BNF. Um, just uh, in case there's others that will be coming forth because this is going to be extended for four years. Thank you. Okay, uh, Vice Chester, for that good point. Uh, Ms. Uh, Lowe, Ms. Lowe? Yes, Chair. Did you want me to answer Delegate Smith's question? Yes, yes, sir, if you would, please. Okay, um, certainly. Chair, members of the Budget and Finance Committee, um, I wouldn't delay, if your question, Delegate Smith, is should we, um, or should we, <laughs> should the Budget and Finance Committee table this legislation? I don't think that's necessary because this procedure that is currently being followed is still allowed even in the amendment to CAP 35-18. However, if moving forward, the Resources and Development Committee and the Budget and Finance Committee wishes to have a joint work session uh, before considering other legislation that's certainly within the committee's purview. Um, I'm not necessarily, I'm not recommending it, but I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. It's just, it's a matter of what the committee chooses to do moving forward. But again, I just want to stress that Delegate Walker's legislation is perfectly in order for consideration today. Chair. Uh, Kristen, we just passed, we just finished passing that legislation. The question was is that uh, with the changes in the new law that was signed, does the committee, Budget Finance, RDC, do they need to do anything different and what we were doing in the past? If so, what do we need to do is what the question was. Okay, so do you need to do anything different? Uh, no. Do you wanna do something different? Um, then I can give you, I can give you um, a recommendation if you are, if the committees are interested in pursuing rules and regulations as referenced in the legislation as amended. But the procedure that the committees have been following is still allowed in the legislation as amended, Chair. Okay, thank you for that. 
Um, Vice Chair Smith, does that help you? Um, okay, question of privilege. Thank you, uh, Chair Henio. I didn't mean to throw a monkey wrench in this whole situation, but just for future, right now, I understand that uh, 00 and 921 is in order, and we use the old uh, procedure, but however, the uh, new CJA-03-21, uh, what uh, was mentioned was there may be new procedures and that was the question do we need to make new procedures or we just keep the old procedure and just uh have it uh cp 35-18 thank you okay mr smith as uh responded by miss low uh we everything's in order as we've been doing it before and this we want to change it so with it so within the committee's um, I guess purview to establish to change it, but as we can still go forward as we used to do in the past. Agushi, thank you. Chair. Agushi, yeah, no. uh, this is uh, Delegate uh, Thomas Walker. And this is a or make this sound uh, completely. Uh, yes. Description. <clears throat> yes, um, Junanda, Chairman Henyu, and members of the uh, Budget and Finance Committee, ADO uh, staff, ADO Office of Legislative Council, and then DOJ, ADO uh, Office of Control as well. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I appreciate, uh, first of all, appreciate um, the committee taking up my uh, request to um, accommodate, you know, going, going ahead of everyone. I know everyone has uh, schedules and there, everyone has to be on task each and every day. And uh, uh, situations where we need understanding, like the uh, legislators that we, the legislative work that we do. Even yeah, the um, coal mine canyon chapter will certainly appreciate the. Um, the um, <clears throat> approval of BNF to RDC. So on behalf of our Coal Mine Canyon chapter, I thank the uh, committee and everyone that was involved in today's um, work here, legislative work, uh, most, most certainly um, Appreciate um, the uh, support and you know moving, looking, looking forward to um, having coal mine address this serious issue with their chapter house building. So it's been a couple of years, and now we're finally making definite steps to um, bring about uh, facilities to accommodate uh, the community members. It's called on Jano, and he had that all Africa. Yeah, I'm so. Yeah, national talk. I don't, uh, be a good old enough. So, the uh, the dog was a finance committee. Uh, back to reports. Um, Mr. Delmar, are you still on the line with us? Yes, sir, I am. Our question, I just want to go ahead, sir. Uh, with your presentation. Okay, thank you, sir, and good morning to the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, good morning to all and those who are listening. We do have three items that um, we're going to be doing a report on. I have with me uh, my staff, uh, Chief of Police uh, Francisco and also Captain Leonard Red Redhorse to be, be talking mainly on E911 and also the temporary use of the Nahatatsi Public Safety Facility, issued by the Chico Lehti. And the item in the middle, rural addressing is uh, for quite some time. And I think he is uh, still working on it. His name is MC Baldwin with the um, Division of Community Development. So, and then I, um, 
Dr. Yellowman is uh, listening in, she said, too. So I did contact Mr. Bowen to join us. So uh, he'll be talking mainly on his initiatives on rural, rural addressing. Okay, going back to the first item, um, this has been uh, a project of the Navajo Nation for, for decades, I understand. But uh, recently, I think that we really made some, some headway on it. Um, the reality of the first um, central point of a, a uh, nine-month system is um, getting very close. Uh, thanks to Chief Francisco for working on this uh, with his staff. So he'll be talking to you about uh, the project that we're currently working on right now. Uh, and talking with Dr. Yellowman recently too, that um, working with the New Mexico legislature that we had requested for some monies, did have that small conversation with her again this morning regarding the site. So um, let me at this point, give it to the chief of police to talk about the 911. Chief. Uh, good morning, can you hear me okay? This is Chief Francisco. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? This is Chief Francisco, Navajo Police Department. 10 4, loud and clear. Okay. Well, thank you all. Uh, good morning, delegates and Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, so, I'd like to kind of just give a real quick kind of history and the importance of this entire project for the Navajo Police Department and public safety in general. Um, you know, as everybody knows, we're pretty behind on technology. Um, especially when it comes to communication and the lack of infrastructure there. Um, so one of my first things, you know, when looking at the operation of the police department and efficiency, you know, a lot of the complaints were we call the police department, nobody shows up. So you start digging into, you know, what's really going on. on. Is it a lack of officers? Is it, you know, just the area? Is it maybe they're not even getting the message? So some of the problem that we're, we're seeing in my assessment, you know, when we first got here four years ago, over four years ago was, you know, we are not getting the calls efficiently because we don't have an advanced 911 system that has addressing, uh, recording lines. We lack the, the staff uh, and the equipment to support all the emergency calls coming in. Uh, the police, the 911 centers right now, our, our dispatch centers are all under the police department fund under the 638 contract. Um, so the police department not only has the job of, you know, policing and, and making sure the officers are out there and doing that, but they also have to take care of the dispatching needs. And so we've actually picked up, you know, a lot of the, the slack as far as, you know, fire and EMS, any emergency comes into my police dispatchers. But yet we didn't have the infrastructure, the technology, the training, and the staff to really efficiently do that. Um, part of that big problem is we didn't have an uh, uh, E911 system, which if anybody's familiar with uh, modern uh, emergency dispatching, in most places, when you call 911, the dispatchers will have an address, a name a lot of times, and at least a phone number of the person calling. So before the dispatcher even talks to that person, they at least know some information of where they're calling from, uh, what their name is, and a callback number. Unfortunately, the way, you know, the Navajo Nation has been set up and the way the dispatchers, uh, dispatch centers have been running for decades has not been that way. So basically, it's a regular landline phone with no caller ID. So it's really up to the uh, dispatchers to really get the information out. So a lot of times people will call in and just say, I sent an officer, but we don't have the information to send them unless they give us an address, a location, uh, what's going on. So it's really inefficient and it's causing some disparity in the calls that are coming in and us able to get the emergency the necessary emergency staffing out to whatever emergency it is. So that's where this is really an important project to really bring this up. So the E911 system will have, it's basically enhanced 911, will have the modern ability to, you know, have callback numbers and addressing and, uh, you know, we can actually put information, like this person, we've been to this house before, we have some information that helps with officer safety and maybe even medical stuff. So it's going to be a really big step forward. Um, there's also the possibility in the future, and that's we're still working on some of this, pretty, it's pretty technical, but from a, a cell phone number, we able to, may be able to get locations of where the calling coming from, triangulation and different things. So this would be a huge benefit for police department and public safety, not just the police department, but all of public safety, fire, EMS, and everybody. Um, so this is why it's a super important 
thing for uh, us to move forward on. So kind of the, what's happened before, we did get a grant before I started as a police chief um, to, you know, bring forward an enhanced 911 system. Um, so unfortunately, there were some pitfalls, there were some infrastructure things, but we picked this up last year, about a year ago, uh, and really moved forward with this. And so Captain Red Horse, uh, he's on the line, and he really took the reins of this and moved forward, and, uh, and you know, a lot of this is really a big credit to him. Uh, we also had to have some experts because this is very technical very technical stuff as far as, you know, the the technology in the actual computer system, the connections, the all the different things involved in that. But really the biggest missing link is the rural addressing. So even if we have the most advanced technology, we have everything in place, if we don't have rural addressing from our communities, um, we still won't have that ability to, to look up addresses and, you know, according to phone numbers. So a huge part of this is rural addressing. Um, so we picked a pilot project for this first go-round that we're doing um, for a 911 center under this Homeland Security grant. Um, so we have, where I think we're about 98%, I would say 95% there to get up and operational. We have equipment, we have the training, we have the facility, we have most of the infrastructure coming in and the connection coming in. And we picked the area on the, the eastern side from Shiprock and, and Crown Point area because some of those chapters actually had their rural addressing totally complete. So in order to make this a feasible pilot project to show it's feasible to do this for the whole Navajo Nation, that's why we picked that area in, in the Shiprock area. And there's, I'll let Captain Redhorse talk about how many chapters it is, but they had rural addressing available for those chapters and we're able to enter it into our 911 computer. So then it'll be a functional enhanced 911 uh, dispatch center. Um, so this is only one area, so it only serves a few chapters and even, you know, on the eastern side. But we have to, you know, build infrastructure for the rest of the whole Navajo Nation. And that requires all the rest of the chapters getting up to um, speed on the rural addressing. And it's going to take money, uh, money to fund this. And I think this is a very important, vital part of public safety. We can hire all the officers in the world, but if we can't tell them where to go and get them there efficiently, it's not going to do any good. So in the interest of public safety, this is a very important project. So there is some uh, projections on how much it'll cost to get the entire nation with the new modern dispatch centers uh, that can actually support uh, more efficient enhanced 911 operation and addressing. Um, along with that is, is you know, there's recording equipment, there's new radio systems, there's all kinds of things that will help our dispatchers be more efficient. Uh, and there's also a plan to consolidate some of the um, existing staff to have more on hand because right now at each district there's only like two dispatchers on duty, one's on a call, the other one's on the radio. That's where you run into problems where you know people are calling and don't get through. But how do we fix that? We consolidate. We make a better, more efficient uh, dispatch center where we have more people on staff, so those calls will be answered immediately. So there's a lot uh, in the planning of this, and I can turn it over to Captain Redhorse to explain some more of the details and the, the long, you know, tedious work that's been going into this and, and, and how, how we plan to roll this out in the future. Um, and after he's done, you know, when we talk about uh, the Sanders area, I uh, have Captain Silversmith on the line, and he'll lay out the plan for that, for uh, Delegate uh, Smith. So I'll turn it over to Captain Redhorse. Thank you, Chief Francisco. For all involved, my name is Leonard Redhorse. I'm currently a police captain working with the Naval Police Organization, currently assigned to Eastern Area Command. I do extend my appreciations to Chairperson Henio, indeed uh, Vice Chair Smith, and the other members of the Budget and Finance Committee. For purposes of our discussion today, uh, indeed, a, a significant portion of it could not have occurred without the assistance of Ms. Carrie Schrock from MTM Solutions who is the Naval Police Department's consultant on this respective project. In addition to the work done by the Tiger Team program, including Police Lieutenant Shirley Sanisha, um, um, Public Safety uh, Operator Billy, uh, and numerous other dispatchers within the uh, 
ranks of the Navajo Police Organization, in addition to Director Vicente uh, from uh, Navajo Telecommunication and Utilities. Uh, indeed, it is a pleasure to discuss the circumstances surrounding the 911 project. Uh, to put it in perspective for you, the team had 287 days in order to complete the totality of this respective project uh, to liquidate roughly 1.5 million uh, in infrastructure development funds for uh, a 911 system that will not only receive the call, but also will document the addresses uh, for, for those addresses that have already been populated. As Chief Francisco identified, uh, there are three chapters within Northern Agency that were prepared with their address. They include the Burnham chapter, the Cudiai chapter, and the Baclavato chapter. Uh, these individual chapter districts took it upon their own initiative uh, in order to complete their respective addressing. So their addresses are now populated into the Masher Street address guide uh, that, that's currently run uh, by the Navajo Police Organization. In addition to that, we have the pilot project, uh, which is situated currently south of Bloomfield, New Mexico at Desnalfo Titli. Uh, and, and the reason for the selection of this site is this is where the quality conduits for internet and data uh, connections are set up. There's a fiber line uh, that, that's there for Sacred Wind. Uh, there's also a fiber line that runs through uh, the AT&T program uh, that, that certainly populates uh, the, the San Juan River Valley. Uh, so we had redundancy in play there. Uh, there are three stations that are set up uh, at this particular site two uh, dispatching and call taking stations and a third exclusive call taking station. Uh, for perspective in, in regards to the totality uh, of responsibility that we had from Chief Francisco, Director Delmar and Director Vicente, we were, uh, dis we were told rather, uh, in order to create the objectives that would identify the current structure in our system, whether or not we could absorb 911 calls, uh, the reasons to consider uh, moderated consolidation uh, from an east slope perspective and a west slope perspective for Navajo Nation, uh, in addition to that, to identifying the pros and cons uh, for consolidation and the, the methodology to assure that we had uh, the actual funding for the consolidated system. I believe Chief Francisco certainly outlined the, the conditions that we face that were under an antiquated system that's predominantly based upon analog reception of our 911 service. In addition to that, the fact that that Navajo Nation as a whole is operating under basic 0911. That is to say, if a person dials 911 from their residential landline, the phone does not automatically go to a Navajo Police Department uh, public safety answering point. Frontier or Sacred Wind, the primary uh, conduit service for telephony on the Navajo Nation, receives the 911 call and from there it transmits the 911 call to an administrative 10 digit line. Uh, 368 1350, uh, 786 2051, uh, 928 871, uh, 2550 when it comes to Rock District, uh, and it transmits it to those lines. So the operator does not know that it's a bona fide 911 call. Uh, and then from there, it's manually entered into our system, our records management system, uh, and then subsequently dispatched to the emergency service, whether it's EMS, fire, uh, animal control, uh, even potentially rangers and the Navajo Police Department. Uh, and then from there, uh, the level of quality assurance is not verified because the calls are generally not recorded uh, and in turn we do not have the ability to go back review the respective calls to help our dispatchers reach the next level of their quality assurance and, and their service to the Navajo people. Uh, in addition to it there, there, there's a number of issues related to radio. Again we're under analog we're not under digital when it comes to radio uh, and our radio frequencies are not monitored uh, for 24-7 for uh, and they're not digitized uh, so we can go back to review them for not only quality assurance, but also potential liability issue. Uh, and then from there, uh, the chiefs uh, identified what is the potential solution? What can we, we what, what resources can we provide? And looking back to our progenitors, those that came before us, our, our, our ancestors in turn, they tackled a large problem by looking at the minority problem as opposed to looking at the whole problem and seeing if the minority problem can provide uh, solutions for the larger term problem. And that's why the, 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 the pilot project was selected because it could localize in best case scenario how we can actually implement the 911 system. And for our purposes, it's conduits. Which area has the best conduits in order to route the calls? In addition to it, who has the existing 911 infrastructure when it comes to rural addressing? And is there a facility that we can house all of it? And, I'm, uh, and, and, and for the most part, I think we're aware about the Disnathal Titli site because that particular site just simply was never used for decades. 
Uh, it's a brand new facility uh, that, that we're able to occupy with the 911 program uh, and in turn provide our, 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 our staff to that site. So what happened after uh, within the 289 days? Well, we contracted for services for a 911 expert. That is the individual that knows the inner and outer workings of a 911 system, in addition to the personnel requirements, in addition to the operating procedure requirements for those personnel, and who's well vested in the training, the continuing training requirements for that respective staff, and who also has the experience in litigating uh, training answers, uh, uh, failure to follow, uh, follow operating procedures, uh, and in turn, the hard requirements and that came with Kerry Schrock with MTM Solutions. Then from there we issued out the proposals for actually creating the environment to successfully operate 911 dispatching. It came from a radio perspective, a telephone perspective, and also the recording mechanisms behind that and the infrastructure support and the conduit support. We have awesome partners over at Sacred Wind who created the mechanisms by which we can successfully transport a 911 call that occurs from any of our different regions out to the Disnothlithi site, utilizing an intermediary through frontier services. Uh, and then from there, it was how can we create the environment to where our radios uh, can be maximized. And this goes back to where antiquated technology occurs because we're now having to create the handoff, the handshake between the radio infrastructure and the digitized radio infrastructure. And this was successfully tested three weeks ago on all the Shiprock based frequencies and uh, the, 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 the one half of, of Crown Point radio frequencies uh, under the uh, Disney radio umbrella. Uh, and then from there, telephony. How do we receive the 911 calls? I'm, I'm able to report to the Budget and Finance Committee that we're now able to successfully divide a 911 call and a non-emergency administrative call. Uh, and this was actually functionally tested. Now, there is a drawback in the fact that Frontier has had uh, a number of bankruptcies that occurred during COVID. Uh, the fact that we're not able to get through our legal requirements through DOJ because of COVID. Uh, and we actually lost the funding source uh, from Department of Homeland Security uh, because, well, we're, we're, we're just COVID prevented all the daily operations that occurred and our ability to move things forward. But I am happy to report that we, we now have a team at Frontier that's willing to work with us, that understands the infrastructure and Sacred Wind actually educated the Frontier team on, on where we're at now. So we're actively engaged in the contract negotiations. Director Basinti with Telecommunication Utilities is leading that respective uh, uh, discussion through the Department of Justice in addition through the RFP process. And then from there, we have the, the, the person component. We all understand that, that there are seven districts. Each district has eight dispatchers. That leads to 56 dispatchers that we actually have. But historically, prior to Chief Francisco, none of these civilian professionals in public safety dispatch ever, uh, uh, um, ever provided the opportunity uh, to have their own people supervise them in their own profession. Because right now, we have police sergeants that are supervising our dispatchers but police sergeants need to focus on Operation Uniform Patrol. Uh, they, they, they just don't have an understanding of the unique requirements of our public safety dispatchers. So uh, through Chief Francisco and Director Delmar and Director Vicente's leadership, we were, we were able to develop the first ever dispatch standard operating procedures that were verified and blessed by the Department of Justice through the Navajo Nation. In addition to it, it also follows the best policy practice and procedures uh, for the Association of Public Safety Communication Officials, uh, which is the premier uh, uh, um, 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 entity that accredits uh, dispatch sites for public safety answering points. And we were also successfully able to deploy the first ever Navajo Police Department training curriculum for our dispatchers. So no longer do we have to send them off reservation. No longer do we have to send them to Arizona Post or the Bureau of Indian Affairs. We actually created our own uh, uh, curriculum, uh, which is now going through the Navajo Post curriculum assessment. And we're also seeking accreditation through uh, our local college system so we can get college credits uh, for our dispatchers. The second issue related to personnel is, is we want to enhance their, their, their ability to perform. Uh, we discussed quality assurance just before, but we need to link that quality assurance to daily supervision. Uh, so Chief Francisco through Director Delmar, were able to identify how we can create a public safety telecommunicator or supervisor position, which will be the first of its kind for the Navajo Nation, who will be able to supervise a single shift uh, of our respective dispatchers and apply and verify that the operating procedures are actually handled and ensure 
ensure that the calls are kicked out between the call received and actually radioed out to the officers, to the EMS and the fire professionals that are actually into the field. Uh, so over the past 10 minutes, we, we've developed the past where, where we were at and what we've actually been able to do with the Consolidated PSAP Center, uh, the, the pilot one over at Disnothal Tithley. Uh, now we need to talk about steps moving forward. Uh, I think one of the uh, first things that we need to recognize uh, is we also are working with the uh, Telecommunication Regulatory Commission in asserting uh, our responsibilities under uh, the, 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 mandata the mandated requirements for establishing an E911 system. Uh, and part of that uh, goes with the regulatory component. component. Part of it also goes to the consolidation component because our partners, both Frontier and Sacred Wind and our future partners for, for purposes of the longer term conduit in TUA uh, have to be regulated, regulated in that environment. Uh, and, and it goes towards how we expect to ensure the longevity uh, of the operating system, the hardware system and the personnel and ensuring that, that we eventually have what we'll call, what will be the public safety answering point director uh, who will manage the civilian component of, of the whole paradigm when it comes to operability from a radio perspective and a 911 perspective for all of uh, the Navajo Division Public Safety Resource Organization. In addition to it, we also have to create the conditions that will assure that the data conduits are firmly established to support uh, the consolidated facilities. Chief Francisco referenced the, the, the impact of consolidated facilities, but another component of it is, is quality assurance because instead of having 56 six different ways of answering a call. You're now going to have the consolidated PSAP centers with their dedicated managers, with their dedicated supervisors under one supervisory umbrella to assure that, that they're following the operating procedures as they've been designed. Uh, in addition to it, we're also going to enhance the training requirements when it comes to consolidating because instead of having the 56 six different ways of interpreting who goes to what priority call, you're going to have it managed under the different uh, PSAP managers through the training curriculum that's going to be identified. Uh, and in addition to it, uh, we're also going to have the, the uh, interests aligned uh, with telecommunication utilities uh, to assure that, that we're maximizing the conduit dollar expenses that we're expending currently uh, for all of our conduited calls. Uh, and, and I think I, I need to address one, one particular issue with budget and finance right now. Um, when we receive a 911 call, it's going over an analog database. It's going through analog lines. Um, and we need to maximize uh, any future project and planning towards a digital umbrella. Uh, and, and the only way to do that is relied fiber lines. Uh, and we are happy to announce that the 550 corridor south of Bloomfield has fiber anchored. Uh, in addition to it, the Northern Agency at Shiprock, New Mexico has fiber anchored. Uh, and we also have fiber that exists uh, at and around uh, Windrock, and we have fiber that exists at the Yatehe uh, Sacred Wind site. Every other site currently is either operating on a microwave system that is not equivalent to fiber, uh, or they're operating under an analog base. Uh, so that really limit, limits where we can fully deploy uh, an enhanced 911 system. Um, but those are challenges that are in turn opportunities uh, and indeed linked to the broadband solutions uh, that are provided by Director Vicente's office, uh, in addition through the leadership that's provided both on executive and legislative branch sides. Uh, and as we move forward, uh, we, one of the questions asked by Chief Francisco, Director Delmar and Director Basinti uh, is what's going to be the bottom line dollar to provide a, a, a comprehensive enhanced 911 system that can, can receive the calls, ensure quality assurance, and provide a, an, an umbrella of safety that we currently do not operate under. Uh, and we did budget form uh, the program budget summary for the consolidation, and we're estimating based upon what we've done at the Disnothlatitli site, based upon best practices that we see within our region, uh, and indeed with, with, with um, uh, opinions uh, coming from APCO, we're looking at roughly $43 million in order to fully deploy a consolidated site. This is broken down at level of detail four for purposes of personnel expenses at roughly $3.2 million. Uh, supplies that occur inside the consolidated site uh, of, of a one-time allocation of 2.3 million uh, in communication and utilities. This goes back to uh, ensuring that we have flexibility, uh, redundant aspects, and ensuring that we have for the full digital uh, handshake between the analog handshake of roughly 8.5 million. 
uh, in addition to it, contractual services of roughly 6.5 million uh, and capital outlay of roughly $22 million. Let me go back to contractual services because this really causes is a significant amount of hindrance. Uh, first and foremost, uh, none of us are 911 experts. These are the individuals in the field who have their respective certifications uh, through the, the NINA organization and the APCOS organization. And right now, uh, Ms. Carrie Schrock with MTM Solutions does hold those certifications to ensure that, that we're operating under the, the required lines. Uh, in addition to it, Sacred Wind has hired their own subject matter expert who does have their respective certifications, and they're working directly with MTM Solutions to assure that, that they're working in line uh, to discuss the peripheral aspects of the high-level discussions about how to actually design the 911 system. But then we have micro-level analysis, who, who analysts rather, uh, who are actually going to develop the architecture and design. Uh, look at them similar to the architects for buildings, uh, but they're the architects for a 911 service that links the radio component, that links the, 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 the telephony component, and that links the data component because we have to upload data, we have to download data, and all of that data also goes into an address database uh, that, that's, that, that's monitored by geographical information specialists. Um, so we have to prepare them and we have to bring them to the table and we have to maximize their research capacity, their, their, their design capacity, and their ability to deploy the entirety of the 911 system within a projected consolidated site. Uh, and then from there, we have the rural addressing component. Uh, and I think this is where Department of uh, Community Development will talk in. Uh, but I think we also have a significant discussion to add to them uh, because part of our, our design phase uh, when it came to how are we going to implement and, and how are we going to create a number assumption for the total number of structures that have to be addressed and utilizing the formulas that have been provided to us uh, by, by, by our colleagues. Uh, we're looking at roughly 185,000 structures that would have to be addressed throughout the entirety of the Navajo Nation uh, and this in turn lent to our budget assumptions that we had and how many personnel hours would be utilized at each particular structure site uh, utilizing computer technology uh, and GIS available technology uh, to, to assure that, that we provide addresses to populate the Navajo Nation Master Street Address Guide. Uh, and that, that's where why the bulk of, of that uh, $6 million uh, contributes to. Uh, in addition to it, the capital outlay assumes two uh, consolidated sites, uh, one at the fiber site uh, for Eastern uh, slope of the Navajo Nation and a fiber oriented slope uh, site uh, on the Western side of the Navajo Nation. Uh, and each are budgeted at a roughly $8.2 million a piece. Uh, and this would evenly divide our existing dispatchers, uh, 56 separately and geographically dispersed dispatchers uh, into the two sites of roughly 28 dispatchers a piece uh, with four supervisors, shift supervisors and, and one manager. Uh, for the entire site. And this would justify uh, the $43 million that we're actually requesting. Uh, indeed, we, we had the opportunity to uh, brief in uh, Delegate Crotty uh, in regards to those particular budgets numbers uh, and, and the micro level assessment of that. Uh, and I'm sure that she's shared it before this respective committee at this time. And that provides an overall summary of what we're doing currently at the Navajo Police Department. Uh, the high level uh, summary that, that we're willing to engage with at this particular time. Uh, and, and for the 16 minutes that we've been engaged in this discussion, outlines where the Naval Police Department is currently at uh, and indeed where we're going to go towards. Uh, I'd like to turn over some time to Director Bicenti uh, because I, I know he's been a, a significant guiding light for purposes of uh, 911 in addition to Chief Francisco uh, and Director Delmar. Okay, uh, this is a thing. Hold up. Um, there is a time lot um, lot of 20 minutes for presentations. Uh, so if we could wrap it up pretty quickly here. Okay, I'll keep mine really short if I may, uh, Chair, if that's okay. Uh, please uh, proceed. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, um, Chairman, Vice Chairman, as well as um, all the honorable members of the Budget and Finance Committee. And for those of you joining us, my name is Christopher Vicente, Executive Director for the Navajo Nation Telecommunications Regulatory Commission. Uh, just wanted to just stress and point out that this is something that's been in the works for quite some time. And I, I think with the track record with the team that's been working on this to be able to 
utilize the funding from the Homeland Security grant in a quick amount of time. And it's just one, one thing that's almost lacking from getting this public safety uh, answering point to be fully operational. And we're working diligently right now with, uh, with our service providers to get it wrapped up. So that way we can start getting things going because again, this has been something that's been that's been pushed with many administrations and I'm, and I'm happy to be part of this, part of this time and team that we're able, we're almost, we're so close to getting this wrapped up, but I just want to highlight some of the benefits, not just with the peace app, but with just the rural addressing aspect. Um, of course, with, with the rural addressing, most important thing is, and I keep stressing this is we have real ID time ID or real ID coming up. It was technically due in August of last year, but we, it's, I'm sorry, October last year, but it's coming up on this year. Real ID is basically, it's the star that's on your driver's license. If you don't have that star, you're not able to fly domestically, enter into any federal government buildings, as well as um, enter any nuclear power plants, as crazy as that sounds. That's one of the important things, because when myself, when I had to go get my real ID done, I, I went to rural addressing and then I had to go to the chapter house, which took about maybe two, three weeks to get the process done. During that time, I was still operating with a temporary license. That's again, that's just one of the things is if we can, if we can get the rural addressing organized, it's going to be beneficial in that aspect. Another thing is personal finance. It doesn't sound like Rural addressing would affect your personal finance, but if you apply for a credit card, you um, the U.S. Patriot Act has been in, uh, has been enacted and then it has expired. And uh, again, it's just one of those things that if it does come back, come about again or if it's enacted again, no one can apply for credit cards. So your personal finances is definitely definitely at risk when it comes to that. The other thing is. Uh, as far as tribal sovereignty, currently all of the taxes, surcharges, 911, all those that you collect, that's normally collected on your cell phone bill, all goes out of, off, all goes out off of Navajo Nation. We don't collect a dime just because we don't have a rural addressing done. So that's another, another aspect that I'm definitely pushing for because one of the other things that the modern day cell phone does have is Wi-Fi calling. If you have Wi-Fi calling, you have to have a verifiable address through the USPS database. So if you don't have it, you have to use the address outside. So when you call 911, when you're connected to Wi-Fi calling, it just makes a nightmare of everything, especially for public safety. My gosh, I just, um, I, I, I'm in full support of this and have been, I've been also working with, um, Director Yellerman from Division of Community Development. So we're we're moving, we're moving and we're moving fast. One of the things I just again keep stressing is real ID. Once we get to that and folks aren't able to enter federal buildings, which has yet to be defined, uh, that that again poses another issues for uh, members of the Navajo Nation because if they're not able to, to enter in a federal building to get their business done, uh, it could be. Gallup Federal Building, it could be Social Security Administration, it could be any of those. Again, it's not defined yet. So I just wanna just mention that the support for this, it's it's time we get rural addressing done. And that way it helps us. And what's also hindering PSAP is of course rural addressing. If we can establish some more efficiency instead of, and, I, and I've been on a ride along, and, oh, an Eastern agency, it took a tow truck driver an hour and a half to find us. So again, it, when we hear about the, when we hear about folks being worked spread thin with our public safety, I think it's when it, it comes to logistics. So if we try and provide our best address, whenever there is an event of emergency, it's hard. I live three miles this direction, two miles this direction, then half a mile this direction when we can isolate it to, oh, this is my address, X, 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 I'm here. Okay, we, we, we know exactly where you're at. So again, I, I'm just in full support and any support that the Budget and Finance Committee can provide around this particular um, project 
is definitely appreciated. And uh, most thank you to, of course, our Navajo public uh, safety partners in this because it wouldn't have been possible to get us uh, with uh, the DZ site. So thank you so much. Chairman Himmel, this is Jesse Delmar. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some questions. Uh, one component, like I said, is the um, rural addressing project. Uh, MC um, Baldwin, Mr. MC Baldwin from um, Division of Community Development is, is with, with us too. Uh, I guess before any questions, if he would make his presentation, sir. Um, please, uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, I believe we are hearing a lot of good information and um, I don't hear any objections from the committee. So if you would proceed. Mr. Bowen, go ahead, sir. Don't forget star six. Mr. Uh, M.C. Baldwin, are you on the line with us? Yeah, uh, uh, this is M.C. from Division of Community Development. I forgot there's two places where I need I have to unmute. I call Taho Shin Yashti. I call Hihat Shin and Akadoa Isgo Shaho Agi, the Division of Community Development. Addressing authority than his no than his he uh FY ten yeah that you see how jeez a for her Kade Yaha Sahade Bane Kane Halen did on Jano Division of Public Safety Yad the Hal Neha Koshin is Kehuna Ago Beso the Yokid a con the Nihitch Kujia is each a hit in the Halen a coho on the ground activity but the Nini I see Neo Itnel Ako Physical addressing had the Nahiki, Jock, Quagi, I see in the Hoti, a call D Babbit in the house of Snet, uh, that's the Christian Nahi, could our, could our Sata, a Shahade Ziho, a call D the center line station, Dan Tinigi, J. Sabe Hosi, I don't on the Da, D the Dahuna Ranodo on the Kin Nasnello, Hagishin, Igisi, but that old Jagi. The establishment of the physical address J R station A this Sato Nigo a coho a she nis nahalin a coho le nik a double run a contra that is tinigi saho a teen I see the hoch a coho a quagge beho the thorn that the picket of source halit out. Sato de Nol is at Nini. I see chapter level the Bishn da Anishi, Jo Aj a hot ego Bishn de Nishako. Chapter Gay Alrak Bedina, local rural addressing committee. A went the Satona zone a coho, a Yahjo Beho Zin, Chopa de Snow, a cojaha for she skinso, skinso a for Jishigi, a yo a kid and the neatly. A coho ado a chapter de esto, uh, bit hadaho sahe la bit nda di nish da bidi nigo. A coho aja jae i si hajo o hol just a snigi. Ado igisin da as tinigo a esto. Eight said beho zinto under the eight said a large and long. A coho begidit ol las the main roads and streets on Navajo Nation eight sa. It's a question. Yeah, the Baganigi. It's a physical address. But the door is a lot of it is not. Just based on I see a bad then. And the Nihi Kujer addressing authority in here. Nini, do I Nihi Nihi budget holder? A coho. The community development administration. Nigi a bucket. And I see ten hundred. Oh, that they need niche. A coho. Kujer's loud. Just a hikaje. Yeah, the quick she is on. Ah, in general, based on. 
Public Safety Answering Point, a special facility where 911 calls are being received. A landline, 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 a Nal Katon that the methodologies na Halit at Hinigi Kujah Nish Naja Ho one bit eat at hinj at hin and the nish aja ho one ja so bit eat hin a quake number na niligi ja e sato nal ego a hot a hatil na ja e astishna a ko e astishna on the ground activity a ko eight apa at tango a ko kujaha shi bisho jaho a ja nzonako hadat eatin or hajdi land at the apa oto le a quage jo quage andi andi eh that's one of the major challenges a ko the rural addressing this nene e an a hot abdi te a ko ho di Mr. Basanti, you need to hold a 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 and the Dutch should not have a holo, a coho, Nikil Yataho, the physical address at Dango, Jokwe, plus code bedeetne, a sato ben ilnish, a denal so stabaka il nego, a kuja, the state of New Mexico, aja, aja sato na yila, sato na haikit is glad, sato. Zingo na yilla, eben natchiko nal sos pahata del ne, a coho, e de ahis net oyo in a nahot eat na halon ya hat zi, a conde a nihinal sosit a ajik in dehot, a ben natchet, began a bansa bandar net, do ben natchet dida, began a bansa bakai, ended the nal sosi casa dagi id, bakage, Ba son panda hat ach eben nach in le federal building got in jaga and the commercial flight so be 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 in jaga what hot e j a h s ne a ko e about the initial and the d the pandemic even na so could the state of Arizona just the other the deadline how long that ne but but ah how na na lia jo ko hot a da initial a ko ho a ko age e yaha the division of community development do jo e yaha ni na ane da be dite ne a ha de da na ha jo be get it or slati plus code be dite nini gi how can we make it official that way we can use it uh, the only chapter that adopted this officially is uh, Mexican water chapter aja resolution hat de la plus coach de ni ido da no but we still need the standard street address jo e hat an de bich hol jis a ko e bin na cha hot ego hot ego a son satan he ka al oder bin na cha nal sostan de na lin a ko kon so ga shin sado le shnant a ja Hey, Mr. Delmar, are you still there? Yes, sir. Um, how do you want to handle this, uh, sir? Um, we can go to the third item, cover that before any uh, um, questions. Yes, uh, if you would, on uh, no, let's see. Oh, okay, Sheena, uh, Sheena. Chief Francisco? Um, yeah, so Ron Silversmith, who's the district commander over um, that area, uh, has a plan, and I'll let him uh, talk about what uh, going to happen with that move. So, uh, Captain Silversmith. 
so one of the things we've been working on is uh, development of new land sub office office of the present day Lieutenant Shirley Sanisha will yell. A Ajit Sabraho Zanja, District Commander, Lord Asata. A ya Sergeant, do two officers, you keep these nito, a ad. Ya had on Nash, no ad, a apes love non time, Lenisa ad, um, Satado, let's know. Ya chohol ne. So a hut on his cousin Aja for the um, new land sub office. Uh, another assignment I've been given was uh, to develop the um, bring back the drug enforcement program. So with the extra building that we have down there, the old clinic in the old administrative uh, IHS administration building, our federal partners so, a Ajit Sto, a rat eat Aidan Lenin of Tos and the Ajit Tahnanashkin Office of Navajo Hope Relocation and the New Land Governments in our Department of Justice. So, a rat eat Ai Kunsab Katnaj Ja e Kundishi, which got that eight as Leon Shinda Ad, a Ajit Sto, Kin Chinana, Isto Lish Ajit. The drug enforcement program, the Eastern Area Commando, Kunde, Central Area Commando, Western Area Command, Drug Enforcement Program, so it on his house is not only not on in a scene here. Thank you, Captain. Uh Chairman Hinio, that would uh, conclude our report from public safety, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that report uh from the Division of Public Safety. Uh committee members, is there a motion? To accept the report. Yellow here. 
Vice Chair Smith, only. Second, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, with that, committee members, questions, comments regarding the report? Uh, Chair Henio. Vice Chair, Vice Chair Smith. Smith. Oh, uh, Chair Henio, though, the uh, committee members on the Finnegan, uh, BNF, uh, though, the Snow Flaggy. Uh, though, <laughs> um, Jesse Delmar, though, the Chief Francisco, so Mr. Red Horse, so Mr. Silversmith, Captain. I can't report Osa, Jono Pahane. Auto, your staff, Dan uh, My question is, uh, did it, uh, did it, had, that's the, did it, uh, she had, uh, Navajo Land Commission, a still commissioner, uh, though, uh, Honorable Elmer Begay, uh, Honorable, Jimmy Yellow Hair. Now this Shinigi, we're still we we can help with the uh, aspects of the uh, not so sticky, with the uh, attorneys, but but that one, and uh, we can bring that forward to the Navajo Land Commission. They are just Larry Russo, though the not that's the commission that the Aggie though the president to uh, expedite and help you guys to get that uh, taken care of. So that they are just the. Uh, Hello, Kat Nan, for uh, actually getting some progress going. John, I did that. That's the so loud. The whole year, I call. I drug enforcement. Nan, he did drug enforcement by other people. He said they did that. Kaya because ah, shot a lady. Ah, not so soon they just. That's a class of tagi. A lot of lands. I call. I don't care that any gi yata hotne. Ishi de spezo, ishi and banda banda al de chepata hane. Of course, loud da no. I don't hit it at da no. I call Hashitada, not the snow. I call Dio Jabaji, I can't have a dini dash with that. Nikas allow a shajita, no pedate, no jurisdiction. Ash with that. I call Paul Sperm, Joel at Dio Jade. A cope no a six thirty eight contract and that j a a so what a da a so lao a ajabana nish bedate they have jurisdiction no hat z a co shanand adan of finigi uh so lao dan of finigi adan data da drug enforcement and yegi a ya ha ye da 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 I let the dispejo, la panda hanito, the sheet that nest that has pondo, big up on that day. A question and that, Hashin Hashin so he can't deal with the coaches that partners and dano. So loud to who ye a codo cato, a letter without eggy. Do that needs in the dano. A codano snatch holder. A co equit abbey had this city there. I don't date it. Clinic though, that we can help with that uh, on, on the fact of uh, getting those buildings for you guys. Shenandada no clinic. So what up? How is it? Oh, I can't judge you at it. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Shenandada. Vice Chair Smith. Um, committee members, Budget Finance Committee. Any other questions, comments? Just a dog video or a chair video? Oh, you have to have been a Shanat on your budget finance committee. Also, uh, Jesse Delmer and also Francisco, police uh, chief of police and Leonard Red Horse and others. Mike. My concern now these days, I hope the uh, Utsu have a better a uh, police department up there because of uh, 10 years ago, my uh, nephew was burned down at the end uh, up there in Utsu, uh, one of those uh, Navajo Housing Authority, and somebody burned down the house with him while he was passed down. 
I hope everything's fine out there. I don't see public safety on the police. So looking for a good a, uh, protection for our community up there. Because a lot of my people are up there now. They're coming from Black Mesa, Heart Drug area. And uh, I think I talked with them last year and they were having tears when I'm talking with them. I said, I'm from Black Mesa. A lot of them are relocated from Heart Drug area. I was kind of emotional, but do your best down there. Francisco, Francisco, do your best to take care of people out there, even though sometimes we're, we're short on police. But I was uh, reading the whole time this past week. I see some of the uh, promotion was went on. More like women are getting more on, more on patrol now these days. Congratulations to our women, Navajo ladies. They're doing their best. Yes, they're kind of heroes and uh, taking a job everywhere, even bus driver. I'm proud of our Navajo ladies. But there's a lot, a lot I have concern, but I have nothing to do with that. I see. But in my area, in Black Mesa, maybe I'll come forward with this later on with the uh, Law and Order Committee. But the uh, God bless you, uh, the leadership of the public safety employees under uh, Judge Delmer and Francisco, too. Once about this, uh, the report is very significant, and we'll do what we can for people out there to help public safety. I uh, see your kid, the uh, Mr. Honorable uh, Raymond Smith, I'm behind him to take care of people up there. Breach, say your kid, now it doesn't die. Uh, here, once the Go back on mute now. Again, uh, Any other questions or comments? Committee uh, members. Chairman, I'll get Oh, yeah, thank you, um, committee, committee members. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Delmar, Police Chief Francisco, and your team on the line. Um, this is what I feel that the nation, in terms of when it comes to emergency response, and when we talk about priority listing, um, is an area that we, as, as leadership here, Budget and Finance Committee, is if, if we need to invest in a system to have a modern E911 on the Navajo Nation, which correlates to a robust rural addressing in the year 2021, then what's needed? Um, what is the investment that Navajo Nation government needs to make in order to ensure her people have access to a 911 system? Uh, rural addressing is very important, and the data collected from 911 centers are very important to a lot of our prevention work. It uh, can be a challenge, and it does jeopardize the life of our people when there's a delayed response, and also for our law enforcement and first responders who are trying to uh, get to the individuals who have, who have called uh, for those resources. So I think in terms of budget and finance committee and to the agents, I would ask, then what do you need from the nation? What investment do you need? Because at this point, um, like looking at how we were able to successfully reestablish the Amber Alert system, and there was funding that was given to rural addressing to um, continue on with their mission, uh, but at this point, what, what will it take? Just like how we're looking at water needs, what is the need to get, to get emergency services out there? And then what is the coordination or directives that we need to ask the oversights so that the executive programs can work together and have, a com and have this comprehensive approach when it comes to E911? So those are my questions and my comments. Um, I did, and I do believe that this is a government service and is uh, for the committee to consider funding when we discuss the permanent trust fund interest 
Uh, there's an opportunity there to fund uh, community service um, programs. And I would say, and I would continue to argue that public safety is historically underfunded. Uh, matter of fact, it's criminal that our federal government is not fully funding um, our public safety. And what that results is um, a system that is not only archaic, but uh, basically we're re-victimizing um, our people. And in our quest to heal our communities, this can be a part that we look into. And uh, is there also additional federal fundings that could be used to help sustain, to improve and enhance our services to our people? Thank you, Chair. Um, you have some questions. Mr. Delmar, you have questions from the committee. Do you want to respond? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, um, Chair. So, Shehlan uh, Kiri to Vice Chair Smith, thank you for your comments, too, as well. Um, so, I just wanted to let you know that I received a call from uh, Director Robert Black this morning, too, as well, um, asking me about the same question, and I told him about this um, agenda item before the Budget and Finance Committee this morning that we'll be talking about the Nahat um, Abzil public safety, public safety Facility. A call, um, he wanted to meet with us and um, pretty much offer his assistance too as well. Khalid um, he call Then I told him that we'd have a um, another discussion on it. Uh, we'll get that figured out and, and, and report to him. I want to mention that. You're right, by contract, by 630 contract. Uh, any illegal activity, criminal activity, if it involves drugs to it as well. Other agencies that go up in Dale Michelle at Daily, as uh, Captain Silversmith reported, we're working with the uh, federal law enforcement agencies too as well. So. Every day, so um, I wanted to respond uh, back to you with that. Um, Delegate Yellow Hair, so thank you for your comments too, as well. Uh, and, um, and just to move forward a little bit uh, to um, uh, Delegate Karate. Uh, you're asking us, you know, what our priorities is, um, you know, because uh, that there is a big need for more officers. Uh, that is pretty much uh, one of the prior priorities that we have right now. If it's um, it is probably our number one priority right now is to boost our manpower in law enforcement with uniform patrol, uh, with um with criminal investigations and also with corrections too as well. So just to jump ahead a, a little bit there, but um, Delegate Yellow here, I need a the net need cleaning. I need to love the but the need and our efforts continue uh, daily to recruit people. And I understood from the chief of police uh, recently that we were working with uh, around about 50 applicants at this point in time uh, and getting prepared to start another academy uh, next month. So, um, uh, so not only uh, police, but uh, there's criminal investigations and also the whole Navajo Division of Public Safety. Even this morning, the fire chief had uh, said that he create, was able to create 14 additional positions uh, currently. I know there's uh, a lot of vacancy, uh, some vacancies with the uh, other departments within the division and we're uh, striving every day to fill those positions and we're encouraging our Navajo people to apply with us um, the jobs are, are really good uh, I would say that the uh, we are competitive uh, competitive as far as law enforcement officer positions is concerned we're pretty competitive regionally so I'm happy to report that um, and, and then Shnanta uh, Delegate Crotty thank you for your comments too as well um, um, 
I'm pretty sure our presentation this morning had uh, um, brought you more uh, in information and shed some more light um, on what we're trying to do as far as the E911 system is concerned. Uh, I know that the staff, uh, the staff under Chief Francisco has been working very, very hard on this. And thanks to Division Director um, um, from the um, um, of, um, Christopher Pacenti, uh, thank you for his efforts too uh, with this, and also MC and we our aim is to get this done. Um, one of the uh, biggest needs that we had uh, way back when, I think it was during the last administration, that we put together a budget of our needs. And one item that comes to mind that we really tried to get was a new CAD system. Um, a, we still have that budget put together. And what happened was uh, we had members of the whole Navajo Division of Public Safety that came together uh, and made a selection uh, of this one CAD uh, system that was recommended. So we as a whole, as a division, we had selected a system. Uh, but, um, you know, we brought many proposals before, but, um, you know, unfortunately, it didn't really go anywhere at all. But we still have that budget put together. Um, and then, of course, uh, Captain the Red Horse's report, you know, there's some additional needs. And um, he, he told you about the overall budget need as far as um, um, the system is concerned to include equipment, include training, include personnel, facilities, and everything else. So, so this would be my response, uh, Chairman Hinio. Thank you. Thank you for that response. Uh, any other questions or comments, uh, Budget Finance Committee? Uh, so today, uh, this is Dal Kiriel here again. Uh, there was, okay, Chair, uh, on the uh, royal address is very important. Chair yeah, Brenda, uh, uh, in Black Mesa area, for example, when the royal address is uh, the problem in Black Mesa, the Pinion ambulance was coming to, supposed to be going up to uh, Forest Lake, but you know, driving up there in the uh, Wolf Creek Canyon, where my place at, it's about maybe 30 miles away from Forest Lake. We had a time to go back down to Ely and back to Black Mesa area, down that way, towards back to Pinion, and then hit that junction and up there to Forest Lake. These are royal address some. Uh, problems because uh, ours is not complete. Uh, who's completed by now? That royal address is very important for emergency. It's good for policemen to come to the uh, the problems we have in Black Mesa. Sometimes the problem, the biggest problem we have is since uh, Jesse Jelmer's on the line and then Francisco too. Policemen don't come surrounding our place. When somebody gets speed up, it gets speed up good, and the next day or two days, the police and finally comes around. While well, these are criminal escape already. These are problems everywhere. I think probably I thought things like that too. Ours are big problems out there, cause road conditions right now. Right now, I call for the roads in Trinity Agency, and uh, we have eight inch snow. We need a grade up there. When they said they're doing in Trinity area. Chile area is our first priority. We're forgotten up there in Black Mesa. Well, my uh, Navajo and Hoopa Land Commission, your Honor Smith and also Donald Gay, to hear this, and some others are committed. I think they're on this road. I was just talking about 8031. These roads are bad. It's not safe for the people. It's good. It's not safe for policemen, too. Ambulance, the worst. Elder, you, 24 7. So these are these are needs. These are related to our agenda this morning. So hopefully, all of you guys will understand your leadership. Come for consummation at on. Eva Chopin, Eva Chashbayashti. When you talk from your heart, it's really hurt you. That's what I I am. I really talk for my people up there. So I so I say, 
my uh, legislation, uh, my phone through 313-314-315. That was one of the very important legislation. I was really hoping this would pass, but I hope this time my colleagues will understand. The day is the worst. snow is the worst day in Pinion area. Glad we have snow, but not good for the students, elderly, invalids, and go to your uh, hospital, your appointments. Sometimes you miss those appointments on this condition. Because roads is important. Then we talk about roads on this agenda. Also, uh, it relates to lawyer addressing 911. These are important related to the agenda. Therefore, it's very important to take care of not at the yeah, yeah, she's selected. on she chair James Henio. I don't know. I have seen it on the being at the middle. It's a not I do Yeah, those are the study. Those should not should not. It's not only by his little by his little names. That these need that they no uncompetent to take care of people. Black Miss is not only my area. Other hundred and ten chapters are important to me too. I share once about the big at all the cushion, but that is so so not so that is the car teacher. Chair, thank you very much. Chair, Vice Chair Smith. I hear Snanda, my daughter, being a committee members, my daughter, Mr. Delmore. Reporting Lado to your staff. Do you know about this case, Shanda? Slow. I see the way that those should share a promotion, does we? Congratulations, Edition. It's good to see promotion. I don't know retired. The question, the uh, the, th- the thought is, did it, uh, Shanda? Quite a uh, Budget in finance, you don't. Uh, we're doing a comprehensive budget based with us, and then they call be the date in unmet needs and call academy. Be so we see the media. Is that uh, they don't so to snow? Yeah, and it uh, president uh, never that uh, kiss so call. Academy, though, the capital. And then he building and that's us bus. What about your bias, huh? We call how she yeah huh? That cannot do that. So that's in the base of Hudla. We see the milk so he doesn't do that. He do that nito. He do that. They did not have that. These do do behind there. Headquarters, temporary headquarters, and dot asta no. They stand out there. A call a hood yago, a ha. Could you down one rock building to Anigi? I see, but titik Kinsana dot ash, Lana needs in. They care, that's a ha condition. Care. I don't pay the cheeto a teen that all two. And later, the kitchen had a gear. Hey, I just care, son. Call New Mexico, Nate. Oh, I go New Mexico. I seen so. You can't not show. Yalagi. Okay, put our bounces kitchen and that. We could match the dollars for them. Turn they says, and though New Mexico capital improvement at Aggie. I thought that. I'm hoping that we can do that. And uh, there's already water, there's already electricity, there's already roads up to the uh, 
the areas that we could select and put in there. I don't know. Because now, <clears throat> there's no uh, firearms training facility. Hey, I just don't know. And we can put it in there for the uh, firearms training. Oh, hey, uh, that's one of the major things that officers need to be trained on. Firearms. Okay. For the officers to go and qualify every uh, twice a year based on the uh, qualification standards. What about this case? I'm sure it can it can be done. That's what I'm thinking about. Trying to help with the uh, police department in providing a. Uh, a nice building later, so what had not any nest? Hey, so can I see touch one? And that's us, that's so they not kissing me. So we need to think about that too. I don't know, not this son dated Washington. Let's see, done hostages. We see the meal so eight and the things. Shan quiet our money, yeah. Okay, I don't know if we can pay for that too. I don't know how this is. I don't know if corrections are done. We haven't got paid. They did the emergency shut down. Hazardous, hazardous pay, though, the special duty pay. I call Yale CARES Act money. Pay, I call the Hidotan. We were first on line. I call Adopta Yale Hitcher. So is that the question? And we need to help out on that, too. So those are the things I'm concerned about, Shinanda, on behalf of the Naval Police. Yo, that's eh? I'm glad to see that these things are moving forward. Gang unit and not uh, and other places that need to sell out the whole yet done. So, okay, what are Shinanda? We have this here. Okay, thank you, Chair. Any other questions or comments for our presenters? Uh, then I uh, turn the mic floor over to Mr. Delmar for a final response. I'll call for the question after that. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> response to um, Shinanta Delgate Yellow here regarding the Pinyon area and the services from the Navajo Division of Public Safety. Uh, first of all, um, let me tell you that the Navajo Nation EMS has a presence there. They have an office situated with uh, an EMT supervisor and also EMTs and, and vehicles too as well. Um, and I think that there is um, two or three Navajo police officers that live in, in that area too. Um, I, uh, then uh, a deputy sheriff from Navajo County, um, but that was uh, about a year ago. I'm not sure if he's still out there, but um, I just want to let you know that the, uh, the command level people of the uh, Navajo Police Department, we receive like daily incident reports, um, and some are like in progress. A call, Chinle is a, a Chinle district. Um, Pinyon is under Chinle district. Because they're always busy, and I know that myself and the chief of police, we do have conversations regarding Chinle as to how we could uh, counter all the uh, law enforcement service calls that we receive daily. I know that our officers uh, they, uh, continually respond to that area, to the Pinyon area. As far as uh, the Forest Lake and uh, and has covered uh, the daily and, and nightly too as well. There is an area uh, I think between uh, the former 
Black Mesa Mine, uh, Peabody Mine, and also the Force Lake area there is uh, uh, in between uh, Adohot and Halen. Uh, the other side on the western side is Kianta District, and on this side is Chinle District. Uh, that doesn't say that um, Kianta doesn't respond into Forest Lake. They do, and, and, so, and so, so forth, too, as well. All the way down the line towards Rough Rock, uh, 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 between Chichimato and Rough Rock. So, but I just want to assure you that we respond out there daily. Um, and then um, to uh, Vice Chair Smith, the Queen Bashi, and I don't know if the Academy, uh, thank you for your uh, your uh, response on, on the Academy. Last week, um, we had a meeting with uh, Delegate Eugene So. Uh, and there's like three phases to the uh, construction and development of the of the academy. And that's pretty much established right now. We know where it's going to go in Chin Li. And there is a first phase, a second phase, and a third phase. And, and, and thank you for your support on the academy. Uh, we'd like to see this um, come to being. Uh, I don't uh, the iron money based on the I think we're almost to the point of resolving it. One of the frustrations that we have is we continue to provide documents and information to this office. Um, a call, oh, I'm, we don't know what's happening to it, uh, but we are working with them right now. We have a, some consultants that were hired by the Navajo Foundation DOJ that we're working with uh, daily on it. So I am very optimistic and uh, that we'll uh, have this resolved very shortly. I don't know the, uh, the special duty pay and also the hazard pay. Uh, the Kribashi, um uh, by the uh, controller's office. Um, the Kui Gushi claims that yeah, we're still addressing that. Now, currently, yeah, we're using uh, internal funds right now to uh, cover some of them. Corrections, that's one of the problems that we're having. And then the money is coming from the Navajo regional office. Um, Around about three million dollars. That's a we're continuing continuing to use that. Uh, the Navajo Nation Department of Corrections. They still have a, a balance in there that we are addressing uh, currently. So, a question as far as the uh, um, the um, special duty pay, the unaddressed special duty pay um, is concerned. So, I think with that. Um, Chairman Hinio, what are you on each other? Speed on this, I don't hear it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank Brandon, are you still there, Special Smith? I'll take over the gamble for now. I guess back to the worst. I'll say I'm <laughs> unmuted. I guess I was muted here. I was trying to, I'm sure talking away, calling for the question. Um, I believe that's uh, the extent of the response. Thank you, Mr. Delmar, for all the response and everything. And um, put those. Uh, to the Dow Budget and Finance Committee. If there are no further questions or comments, I'll call for the question. Accepting the report. Uh, uh, Jimmy Yell here. I'll vote green, but I have some questions about probably later on. Is that in reference to a hardship pay? Uh, to the, I'll vote green. Uh, Thank you. Shanta, uh, yeah. get Yell here votes green for the record. Uh, Shanta, <laughs> Vice Chair Smith. <clears throat> Agree. 
Okay, for the record, let's just move to the screen. Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty. Uh, Chair, Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty votes green. Thank you. Okay, for the record, Delegate Amber Kinesbaugh Crotty votes green. Uh, this is not, uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Oh, uh, yeah, I, uh, Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. I just see the hand last night. For the record, they'll get Nathaniel Brown votes green. I just want to get Elmer P. Begay. They'll get Elmer P. Begay. With that, so, uh, vote tallying is four in favor. Uh, zero opposed. Chair not voting. They'll get Elmer P. Begay also Chair. not voting. Chair, vote uh, green. Chair, for the record, oh, they'll get Elmer, Elmer P. Begay vote screen. So we do have a vote of five in favor. Zero opposed. Chair not voting. I can't allow Mr. Delmar and your staff for providing this uh, a good report. Thank you, this, sir. Uh, uh, now. At this, we'll move on to report item B, CAP 3518 expenditure report. Uh, presented by Ms. Kirk, our controller of the Navajo Nation. Uh, Ms. Kirk, uh, Shema, are you there on the call? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, I'll do 12. Okay. Let's go ahead. Do you want me to start now? Oh. Okay. Um, Aroyate, uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee and Aro Shiaz Chair Henio. Um, I wasn't sure about this uh, report, but um, what we've done, and I don't know if uh, we passed, uh, we emailed the report, um, the written report, but um, I know we were going to email the written report. So essentially, this is the same report that we give out when there's a PTFCSN uh, meeting. And so we do have the latest numbers. Um, and so I can just, part of it is just explaining the CSN fund. So Ajika Basis Nediki CSN fund. Uh, so right now, at the end of January, uh, the unaudited, unappropriated balance in the fund is four hundred and thirty-six million four hundred and six thousand eight hundred and ninety-three. Um, so I believe the report was emailed. Um, so um, just going through quickly, going through my memo. Um, so on the memo, I just gave the unappropriated, unaudited balance. Auto, um, as of January 31st, the year to date, uh, CSN revenues, which is mostly uh, your, the interest that it earns. Um, so as of the end of January 30th, uh, beginning of the fiscal year, fiscal year to date, um, it's 55, uh, million eight hundred and fifty-six thousand three hundred and sixty-seven dollars, and then the um, unaudited expenditures, which is mainly any activity that has to do with the various projects under CSN, um, and then any of the uh, administrative type fees. Um, we have expenditures year, year fiscal year to date which is eight hundred and seventeen thousand two hundred and seventy six dollars so as a result um, the unaudited net revenue uh, is as of the end of January um, 2021 it's fifty five million thirty nine thousand ninety one dollars um, so um, in the report that we sent out, uh, you'll see the numbers I just went through. You'll see that in a financial format in Exhibit A. Um, that's where we get our numbers from that I just went through. And then and we also have Exhibit B attached, which is a CSN project listing. Um, it's six pages. And so 
I just want to point out if you're on uh, the six pages, midway through the first page starts the um, the CAP-35-18, the Community Development Projects. Um, so it goes all the way to page um, It goes all the way to page, I believe, four, midway through page four. So that's a listing of all the the um, uh, CAP-35-18 um, expenditures, uh, activities. Um, so you'll see the original budget. You'll see the revised budget amount the actual uh, expenditures, and then the open commitment amount column, and then the budget balance. Um, we also added, uh, if you look through page one all the way to page four, that's the listing of the various projects um, and the various business units, um, and then the activity. Uh, and then you'll, we also added a column of what year it pertains to. Um, as you can see, that's a big list. Um, so just something to note, um, on page four, uh, midway through, it says pending CAP 35-18 projects, um, you'll see $16,131,180. That means that is, um, unbudgeted. Um, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, so um, other than that, um, you'll see the listing of the various uh, projects, business units by, by business units, and then the activity within everything. So in a summary format, um, in, on page four, uh, right, where, right below where I pointed out the 16 million, um, that's uh, not yet budgeted. Um, so I can go over uh, the, the numbers on a summary format. Um, so the revised budget amount, I'll start with that. It's $99,416,667. Um, and then the actual amount, which is a, the next column over, which is the expenditures. Um, so that one is $23,644,727.27. And then the open commitment, the next column over is $7,253,294.91. And then the last column, which is the budget balance that's uh, still available is $68,518,000. $644.82. So I just wanted to point that, that out um, in particular to CAP, CAP um, 35-18. Um, the only other thing on this, again, this is this report covers everything of CSN. Um, the only other thing I could point out is uh, um, everything is, is organized by the resolutions. Um, and so, uh, and then the last one is CJY 57 dash, um, I'm sorry, uh, CJA 01 dash 21. Uh, those that starts on the last page four of six and it goes all the way to page six of six. I just want to point that that's the latest activity with the CSM fund. Um, and so that that's uh, the report that I have. Again, um, I'm going off what we prepared in a written format, um, which was email. Um, I think everyone should have it. Um, it's a lot of information, a lot of numbers, but those I just went over the key numbers and then the key things to uh, look at within this report. Um, again, it starts at page four, midway. Uh, um, sorry, it starts on page one um, as to the specific projects line by line, and it goes all the way to page four. 
um, if there's anything in particular. Again, we also just account for the activities. If there's specific questions, um, I think uh, DCD is the uh, administrator of all these types of projects. So that's my report, um, Chair. Um, and and um, Mr. Willie is on the line also. I don't know if he has anything add, had, um, anything to add, Mr. Robert Willie. Uh, thank, thank you, Ms. Kirk. Um, when we put this together, um, we did um, include all the projects. Um, the pending projects are at the bottom, that $16 million that you did mention on page four. Those are mostly year three projects that have yet to be set up. I haven't um, reached out to DCD or budget uh, office, excuse me, office of management and budget to see where they're at in that process. But um, that's what mostly that is, um, that 16 million. Also, um, as mentioned earlier in this meeting, we did have um, the CJA-03-21, um, which was um, uh, spoken about, which uh, extended the um, project um, completion deadlines from um, the 24 months to the 48 months also. So that would have to have an impact on how long these would um, extend out to, to for completion also. Um, also on this report, if you notice on page um, three, um, the heavy equipment that just got passed, CJA 01-20, um, Office of Management and Budget is currently setting the budgets for those. So if you look at pages five through seven of exhibit B, um, you'll see the chapter balances um, of, of those um, of that resolution, and there's still an amount of um, 19 million dollars that still needs to be set up for that. So, thank you. Well, Christina, so that that completes your report, oh. uh, Ms. Kirk. Oh, oh, that, that's it. Committee members, is there a motion to accept the report? Motion, Delegate Crotty. Okay, motion by Shinanda, Delegate Amber, can I Is there a second? Second. Second by Elmer P. Begay. Go ahead. Second by Shinanda, Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Uh, is that committee members uh, questions or comments on the your presenters? Uh, Delegate Crotty with the question. Delegate uh, Shinanda, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Controller, and your staff for pulling together this document. I appreciate the work that went into this document, and it's very helpful as um, as a legislature to see uh, the dynamic of, of how the Sehasin, um was appropriated and its use and how much is currently available. Uh, I think um, my first question uh, would be in terms of... Um, Looking at what's never been clear is uh, this USDA insurance premium for 19.8 million and the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund for 7.6 million. Are those funds that we should plan to be recouped, or what is the understanding? Um, in uh, it looks because there's a legislation right now to allocate funding. Um, from the USDA in insurance premium. And I think they have a balance of like over $40 million. And so I was asking if uh, that is planning to be uh, recouped. And uh, in terms of, I'm um, sorry. And in terms of the FY21 budget, so there's $2.2 million uh, I know that we're having conversations about our comprehensive budget. If you could get me a little bit more information um, about that $2.2 million. Uh, I'm looking at an amendment that's $9.2 million. So I'm, I'm just not sure if we're pulling out of Sihasin instead of using other funding so that we could either um, return some of these Sihasin dollars or, or know that when we, when we have future discussions about allocations and the true nature that uh, these funds were supposed to be utilized for. Thank you, Chair and committee members. This is a great report, thank you. 
appreciate you for that question. Uh, any other further questions or comments uh, sent out committee members? I uh, then I'll defer back to Ms. Kurt uh, for response from the uh, Shema. So, um, Chiyaj Otto, um, thank you for the question, uh, Delegate Crotty. Um, so, regarding the uh, the Ag Fund, the Agriculture Fund, or the um, the USDA pasture rangeland, um, the original uh, resolution had um, the nineteen point eight million. Um, and then I and there's some certain timing to 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 the way everything works. Uh, usually every year the um, the premiums are due uh, at the end of September, uh, and then um, so uh, the timing is that uh, the the um, depending on where they're. Uh, um, I guess you can say betting on which. You know, and then the drought uh, throughout the year. Then um, uh, I think uh, then they come to us and say, "Well, we need this much." Um, so I think first, the uh, what they'll do is they'll offset offset from the premium that they've um, they've made during the year, and then what's left and what they think would be owed uh, between September and the end of the calendar year. Um, so it's a little tricky as far as uh, timing wise. Um, so usually, uh, and then the other uh, thing that we had to deal with was um, when there's additional funds, when it comes back, does it come back to uh, the CSN um, to replenish that? And then, so you have to differentiate that from the, you know, the, the, the um, what it earns throughout the year. So I know that's a little, tricky to understand as well. So, um, but, um, so what we show would be uh, out of the original 19 uh, or so million that gets, uh, that was approved, then generally um, what we show usually is what gets sent out by the year. And so that can vary, um, that, that's our payment that, that we send out. Um, uh, so, um, so that's kind of how it works. Again, um, I believe the the, uh, the the payment for that year, which is done in at the end of September, but but we don't square up until past uh, the calendar year in, and that happens around the springtime. So, uh, if we expend it, the um, the twelve million then uh, we can get what we spent uh, back in uh, uh, the end of the September, uh, we can recoup that uh, in the springtime when everything gets squared up from the calendar year. Um, I believe that's how it works. I know I'm all over the place, but um, I don't know if um, Mr. Woolley can explain or kind of fill in the blanks and as how I explained it again on that side. Um, Robert, do you have anything else to add or explain it better than uh, me? <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Kirk. Um, as far as the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund, um, we reserved the $19 million in there um, for any premiums that are uh, forthcoming. I know there was a resolution, I don't have the citation offhand, but it extended it, I think, to 2023. I'll have to locate that and verify that. So that's why we keep that reserve in there because they still wanted to utilize the South in to make the premium payments. Although the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund does have its own fund, they're still utilizing the South in to make those premium payments. There's also another mechanism where the um, Infrastructure Fund is refunding the South in. Um, we keep that amount in there for any future payments that are being um, uh, made um, for this insurance. I know during the year we get um, premium payouts to the, um, the Navajo Nation for the infrastructure fund. Um, there was a balance done, uh, I believe in November um, for that fund, but um, since then there, was been, there, there has been an allocation of $19 million that um, I believe agriculture 
wanted to utilize for year two, and we sent that memo over to Office of Management and Budget. So um, whatever balance that Delegate Crowdy is speaking about, it, it's going to be reduced by that $19 million, which um, was submitted to Office of Management and Budget. So we will be doing uh, new financials on the Agriculture Fund, um, uh, reserving that amount also too, so that uh, amount will actually come down. Um, as far as Delegate Crowdy's other question about the $2 million, I'm not sure if she could repeat the question. I was running through the report trying to locate um, that $2 million, but I was unable to, so if she could um, kindly repeat that question. I'd be happy, happy to try to um, answer that. Thank you. Okay, back to Shunan Dao. Uh, Delegate Amber Kesbah Prati, there's a request if you could um, repeat your uh, question so you get uh, provide a better response, Mr. Willie. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, colleagues, uh, Mr. Willie and controller. I'm referring to page two of the document, Exhibit A. Um, the, there's a, a area that says committed, and it's citation 12, where it's fiscal year 21 budget for $2.2 million. And in the citation, it does say current year budget. I need a little bit more information on that. Um, if you could remind me where Tejasin dollars were used for the budget, um, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. No, thank you for that, Shanta. Uh, back to Mr. Willie. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the thing unmuted here. Um, I believe that's for administrative fees um, for the Sahasin. So um, in order to invest in such, we need to pay administrative fees. So that 2.2 uh, would be part of that um, amount also. Thank you. Can I put that response? Uh, back to um, our Budget and Finance Committee, Shanta, uh, Delegate Amber Kazan-Karadi, is there any follow-ups? Thank you. I, I appreciate, um, I, I do have a follow-up. So if that amount, if the 2.2 is needed to administer the account, I'm assuming like the investment portfolio, uh, what, what was the anticipated amount? What did we... So I'm looking at this in fair investment. If you could just let me know um, the funding that was help me understand this investment part of uh, the report. So this is still page two. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you for that follow up question. Uh, committee members, any other questions or comments? Sure. Uh, Elmer, 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 after Elmer. Sure. This is Delgado. Um, good. Was, okay. Um, um, Ms. Kurta, um, can you, um, uh, maybe, the, for, maybe for clarification, on page two, be there exhibit B, where the um, NTA loan uh, receivable Bukage. Do you know the? Uh, could you go over that again with 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 us? The uh, um, I know that they did some work during the CARES Act. I call Kade Yae. They're doing uh, some. Um, they're still continued using some funds. Can you go over this one to see when the uh, uh, projects that are listed in there on this loan? Is there is there is there attachment to this or where the, where is there any uh, listing of uh, projects? 
where the projects are. At least that's the best call, that is, that's my question. Okay, good enough for that <clears throat> question. Um, so Dr. Delegate Jimmy Yellow here, then I'll get sort of back to our presenter. Okay, out there, here at Nana, here has a very permanent part, brings us the uh, financial report on self funds. I've had a question from, I think what this is from page three to page three to page seven. The total page is ninety nine million four hundred sixteen thousand six hundred sixty seven thousand. That is the budget with the revised budget here. Auto Brenda Show oh, yeah. They are the uh one hundred million dollars. A uh build twenty two councilman based on JD one hundred million. Called the page the Page three to that read the quick computer away from the key. Then the key way page seven to another key. A quick key. Page seven to audio had negative a year. Calculation is ninety nine million four hundred sixteen thousand six six seven. D. That's it and so yeah. One hundred million dollars in it is. And then that's it. A quick year. Famous in year. A quick IAT. It has it at the equal you work sheet. Uh, ever not skid on quail yagi. I see some project they revised and revised budget. Some have zero, some have actual expenditures. Actual expenditures has zero balance. It cottons, oh, yeah, uh, so they just oh, Mr. Robert Willie. That's my question on that one, just to understand the work sheet right here. As your initial, I'll say when that key. Hey, I did have not just kitty the craggy. Uh, little perlene door, she kissed Mr. Robert Willie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Christina, for those questions. Um, back to uh, the Alpha Second Controller, Ms. Kirk, other Mr. Willie, by response. Um, oh, uh, Shiaz Chair and members of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, so regarding um, Shadeja, her question on the, the two million that on um, Exhibit A that talks about the, I believe it's 2.4 million. Um, and so essentially every year uh, during the comprehensive budgets, um, our investment section, they, they do, they do the amount, uh, they budget the amount for the investment fees um, and for that, for the upcoming year. So that's the um, fees and they vary. Uh, they're usually based upon the value of the fund um, with the different money managers. And so uh, depending on what it is invested in. And so, um, uh, so that would be the amount budgeted for payment of the uh, investment fees. Um, so, and that's the uh, the business unit is four zero seven zero 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 two, and we do this not just for the Sihasin fund, but all all uh, all of the investment funds. Um, so that's a yearly exercise we do. And so be because we're showing this particular information for uh, CSN, then that's what we have um, on the financial statements for this fund. Um, and so Otto, she has a delegate Omar Brigay regarding the NTUA, um, that loan uh, uh, that you see is uh, the, it's stemming from the CJA-12-16 and it is the water legislation. The, and then um, essentially uh, in TOA, uh, we loaned out uh, um, uh, from the CHSN for various projects and mainly all of it water projects. And this, the terms of it was uh, kind of a low, um, the same terms as if they went and got 
a USDA uh, loan. Um, so it's very low interest and so forth. A very, um, I think the term was 40 years. And so that's what that represents, that information. Um, and then I think your other question, but I think could you get the, where the projects are. Um, this will only show uh, the financial information, the financial transactions. Um, I, I think if you want to know more about the, where the projects are, that would be more of a DCD question. Um, so the based on the chico de ya ya harne isha hota aro um um so regarding the um to say that uh without get jimmy yellow hair i think your question about essentially how to read this report um it does it is the legislation with the with the projects back then um it was uh contemplated at a hundred million and i don't recall offhand how it wind up a little bit less than that. Um, but yes, uh, essentially it does start from page, the middle of page one. And then these are all the activities um, regarding that original uh, legislation. Um, and, and then that's where we were saying earlier that there are still some the 16 million that uh, needed to be essentially identified and budgeted and so forth. Um, and so, uh, and then these are the transactions, um, what's encumbered, what's been expended, what hasn't. So you, uh, out of the 99, that's why I went through that um, earlier on page four, midway, uh, the, the various activities, um, uh, so, so you'll see 68 million needs to be uh, uh, expended or encumbered still. So just wanted to uh, put that, I think. Um, and then again, um, it's by project. So it, there is a long list of it. So um, I don't know if Mr. Willie, if you, Robert, if you have anything else to add. Uh, thank you, Ms. Kirk. Thank you, Ms. Kirk. Um, as far as the um, the CAP 35-18, I, I know that um, the then President Russell Begay did um, do two line item vetoes um, from that resolution. Um, the list itself was uh, expansive. There's a lot that was um, attached to that um, exhibit. Um, and uh, subsequently, since then, there have been project changes. The tracking of the project changes, we're, we're trying to get a handle on that, but I think Office of Management and Budget and DCD would have a better uh, list of those, of, of which um, projects did change and what they changed to, but that's been happening for the last two and a half years. Thank you. Those are our responses, Isha. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that response. No, no pictures of Dana. Okay, uh, okay. this is Del Get Yell here again. Uh, okay, to follow up with you. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, then, uh, so there, uh, Perlin Kurt, our brother, Mr. Uh, Robert Woolley, thank you very much for bringing this very important financial uh, report here. Uh, I have a question, so I think this pertains to uh, page three to seven. It's about $100 million. That 23rd councilman have put his mon uh, money for a uh, project for the chapters. Uh, oh yeah, calculation. Uh, uh, 99 million for 16667 Bukagi. Uh, yeah, actual expenditures 23 million six or oh, Ranax actually. 23 million six. Open commitment say yes, yeah, 7 million two. I call that budget balance that 68 million five hundred eighteen thousand. There's a lot of money still not spent out of to make that short underfunding on that 100 million. If I'm if I'm reading right, with that 99 million for 16, we're 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 we're, we're lost like 583 
does not account somewhere. A D up about this thing. So and we're underfunding on that. Should be that hundred million dollars, but your your report says ninety nine million four fifteen six hundred sixty seven. So based on that one for your information, sixty eight million five hundred eighteen thousand six hundred forty four thousand eighty two not spent. We're not doing good. I guess overall Navajo Nation we need to spend the money on roads and black mesa. Mr. Robert Willie. Thank you, Chair uh Chair Mr. Henio, the Vice Chair. Uh to Mr. Smith to Shinat uh twenty four councilman being the committee members and um, other members that are listening and other shouldn't or is not sign a do President Nancy Lines are your team, President Liberty Branch. Thank you. Any other further questions or comments, committee members? Chair Henry, I'm Mr. Thank you again, uh, Chair Henio, uh, uh, and your staff on this uh, report. Uh, I've got a question on page uh, two of seven under CAP 35 18, C01768, the Hudson Shopping Center, Baka. Based on your date, Anigi area, one million two hundred sixty-five thousand thirty-five dollars and seventy cents, and the balance, the Kagi area, six hundred forty-seven thousand forty-four dollars and forty-eight cents. Ashwat Athida. So we have a balance under this amount. Ashwat, um, that's my question, uh, Chair. Thank you. For that, any further questions or comments, committee members? And I will refer back to uh, Ms. Kirk and your staff. Shema, go ahead with the response. Um, oh, <clears throat> Chiaj, uh, Chair, and then members of the committee. Uh, just wanted to respond to uh, Shazada uh, Delgit Yellowhair. Um, I think uh, 100 million by um, Ado, 99 million equity car in the Haiga Benina South and the Nish, the Noshi by Kid. Um, I just want to let you know, um, Anita, uh, Mr. Willie Toyahatsi, he don't don't um. This uh, resolution, Aliyah, our legislation um, got sent over to the president, then president Russell Bigay, ADGA, he line item veto two projects, I believe. So that brought it down from 100 million to 99. So, there's a difference. Um, that, that's my response on that one. Auto, uh, I'm trying to look for the uh, the not Atsil chapter um, uh, Robert, do you have a response on that one? Uh, thank you, Ms. Kirk. Um, I looked in the system and it does appear that that balance is there. I don't know what the scope was of this um, project or um, how they spent it, but um, um, DCD would have that information, so um, it appears that that balance is is correct, and I'm not sure what hasn't been spent yet. But um, I, I, it would um, appear to me that you would need to contact DCD to see um, what the remaining funds are to be utilized for. Thank you. Okay. Those are our response, Isha. Okay, thank you a lot for that response. Uh, back to uh, Senator Budget Finance Committee. 
Any further questions or comments? Oh, uh, Chair Henry. Delegate Crotty. Go ahead. Uh, Vice Chair Smith and then Delegate Amber Knossa Crotty. Vice Chair Smith, you have the floor. Okay, the Chair Henry, Dina Edikidigi, Shah Quad, Benda, Shinai, the Naso Sadan Hoyt Aisa Ila, a called Change Order Ila, Dishponator, called Besa Aja Sinelegi, Kushi the Miliaja, has taught me nothing double on Disney double on state so sit. If one had not Besa Aja Sinelego, Shinai the Kid Aha. Sabendo Nisto, I yal Ajas Anigi. A Beshmas unborti, a hotaya. The call Beshmas Anne Kujita Yal Bendo Nishigi. Aya, what I'll be so ya, did it, Sadanoid I. CAP thirty five dash eighteen. A hot of Tinaidiki Shinanda. Um, yeah. Shinanda, Vice Chairman. I believe um, you need probably need to contact uh, the Division of Economic Development because I think they were the lead in this now to the shopping center and see what's why there is a balance and why what's the what maybe there might be tied up for something. Um, I believe it. You were working with Mr. I think um, somebody retired from there, your main agent. Maybe if you could go back to stand up. On that, and then if there is a budget balance according to OOC, then uh, we could start making and uh, working on um, amendments. I, uh, if you want to go that route, should uh, what's your name? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Delegate Ember, can I ask my card? You have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, appreciate that. I was um, going to. Goodness, what was I going to ask? Um, oh, I was going to say, um, so there. if we could confirm, I thought, it, do we know if Delegate Autoso is still moving forward with his legislation to provide equity and distribute the remaining Sehassin to every Navajo Nation um, district? So if there's 24 districts, if we... Um, divide the remaining amount and so what i'm looking at is if the remaining amount is that 422 million if that's the re remaining amount first and then if we divide that by 24 it's approximately about 18 million dollars and so delegate yellow here um I, I hear you and your concerns and that could be an opportunity for all delegates to provide approximately $18 million to help uh, their districts um, utilizing Sihasin dollars and, and their intent. So can I just get a, a confirmation about exactly what is, so I see it 400 and 436 million, is that the amount? And then if we know the status of Delegate Autoso's legislation, I don't think it's been heard before um, budget and finance. Thank you, Chair. I just shake your hand for that question. On the uh, remaining budget balance, uh, I'm out for the um, Senate account to give Ms. Kirk. Can you provide that response? Um, oh, uh, Chiaz Chair, and then members of the committee, Otto Shideja. Um, so um, the way to look at this, this is the um, coming from the balance sheet. So usually there's a balance as of a certain date. Um, so in my the cover sheet of my memo, it does say that um, as of January 31st, 2021, um, that is the unaudited and then unappropriated balance. So that's what would be available. Um, and that's the 436 million four hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred ninety three dollars. Again, um, we're midway through February. Um, the way this thing works is uh, the, the investment, the, the balance is invested. And um, through the course of on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, these numbers change. 
Um, and then also uh, the investments earn interest. So not only do the, the dollar value change, um, the, the value of the, the, the investment changes on a daily basis, but then also the if where it earns uh, income, whether it's dividends or interest, those change daily as well. So um, just it, so this balance is a snapshot at the end of um, January. Of course, it's also unaudited. So um, if there was a legislation to that effect, um, this kind of, I would say this gives you a ballpark figure um, until such time that, you know, uh, if something like that passes, then there will be a liquidation. We have to sell off all the investments and so forth to make sure to get the final balance. But this would be a, a ballpark figure. So it is a good Thank you for that. And, and I believe we have uh, Kristen or Dana on the line. Yes, uh, thank you, Bajun. Um, I do remember the Yeah, Dana. Somebody, you guys need to decide who's speaking because I heard Dana on the line and I have Kristen speaking. So I wonder if you decide who's going to speak first. Thank you. This is uh, Dana. Um, I do not have a request, uh, a legislation request from a delegate to uh, distribute, allocate, appropriate uh, the remaining balance. Uh, I do have a request uh, to uh, do a legislation to amend CAP 3518 to add an additional $60 million. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chair. And the other question uh, that I, I had uh, has already been answered by the control. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that response. So uh, there is no legislation request for the um, um, expenditure of the $10,000. Uh, with that, committee members, any further questions or comments? It was kind of garbled on my end over here regarding the uh, report from Legislative Chief Council. I heard that there's no uh, request for citizen, but something about CAP 3518, there's an amendment. Uh, could that be repeated? Yes, uh, Ms. Barbara had reported that there is, she, there is legislation from delegate. Uh, to request to amend CAP 3518 to request for another $60 million on top of what's already uh, in there. That was the response from uh, Ms. Arba, Vice Chair Smith. Oh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. I'm pushing now with that. I can begin with any further questions or comments. If not, I'll call for the questions. Chair, this is Delegate Yellowhair. Delegate Yellowhair, go ahead. Say, yeah, at all she has this niece. So, there are Perling. So, Mr. Robert Woolley, thank you very much. Bring forth just a very important financial report. Financial Nahata. Ah, Huta Nata, Kilaya, Boda, today, one of the things you did on Sunday. Ah, it's just a name, and it's here for your answer. I appreciate it. God bless them. Let's take care of this business. Once and for all, there's a lot of need to be taken care of, especially my part in Black Mesa. Uh, I really need to go by needs and AIC businesses by needs. Equally, it also is a junction in Zonda. It opens at all now. It's going to be just in the bank or in the pockets. And then I really want money for my people. Now, that's a little by England. I just want to talk about this to hear. I will tell you, his answer. To the chair, thank you. Go back on mute now. I'm ready to vote. Uh, there's no further questions or comments. Shenanda uh, Budget and Finance Committee, I'll call for the question to accept the report. Shenanda uh, Delegate Jimmy over here. I vote green, chair. For the record, Shenanda Delegate Yellow here votes green. Shenanda, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Green, green.
Uh, vote is green. Vote is for the record. Vice Chair Smith votes green. Additional uh, Delegate Amber Tennis Bar Crotty. Delegate Amber Tennis Bar Crotty votes green. Thank you. Thanks for the record. Delegate Amber Tennis Bar Crotty votes green. Additional uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. <coughs> Delegate Brown votes green. Yeah. For the record, they'll get Nathaniel Brown votes green. Ashwin Da, they'll get Umar T. Begay. I vote green. They'll get Ashwin Da. For the record, they'll get Umar T. Begay votes green. Uh, we do have a vote tally of five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Uh, he had enough for the report. Uh, Ms. Perling Kurt and Mr. Robert Willie for all the responses. Uh, with that, moving forward, uh, we do have enterprises receiving CARES Act funding. Again, presented by Shema, Ms. Perling Kurt, our controller. And I believe we do have ATUA uh, and Navajo Engineering Construction Authority and maybe any some other enterprises on the line with us right now. So I'll have Ms. Uh, Perling Kurt, our controller of the Navajo Nation, I'll start off the report. You have the floor, Shima. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, Shia, Chair Henio, and then members of the Budget and Finance Committee members. Uh, so um, regarding this report, um, we did send out a written report. Um, we pretty much... Uh, reported on from the standpoint of what we call subrecipients. Um, if you recall uh, um, that from the uh, CARES funding. And so right now uh, from our office, uh, we are just uh, tying up all those uh, reporting. Um, our office did uh, do a comprehensive reporting, which was due uh, January 10th. I believe it was January 10th or thereabouts. Uh, that was a reporting on CARES fund to the US Treasury. And so I will say that the reporting that our office had to do, it was, I wanna say it was in excess of 400 pages um, covering all the activities of CARES uh, funding. Um, the written report that we gave out um, talks about just kind of a recap of what our requirements were to the, for the subrecipients. Um, we did have to follow uh, treasury guidance um, on our subrecipient agreements. And in this, in our case, we, we entered into subrecipient agreements with um, uh, a number of entities uh, in addition to our enterprises. Um, we did have NTUA being the largest uh, subrecipient. Um, and then we have a number of other entities. Um, we also had a grant agreement um, with uh, NNGE, uh, the gaming enterprise. And um, so, uh, our subrecipient agreements uh, started off with certain dates. Um, back then, if you recall, we were working with the federal deadlines of December 30th. Um, so we had, and if you recall, the Napa Nation was the prime recipient of the CARES dollars. So anything that we're subgranting out, uh, we had to enter into a subrecipient agreement. Um, so uh, so in our sub-recipient agreements, we had certain reporting requirements. Um, and then not only during that time, but also as a final close, close out, we had a 60 day um, final uh, reporting. And so, um, and then uh, with Navajo Nation law that was passed, um, notably the uh, internal deadlines that we had for from the NAVI resolutions. Uh, some of those dates change. Uh, uh, some went from December 30th to December 28th uh, noontime. 
and a lot of it, uh, if they are not, if they're unspent, then they would get reverted back to the hardship. So, um, so we're we're doing a lot of the final reporting. Anything, any invoices by our sub sub awards um, sub recipients, uh, anything over the twenty five thousand um, that has to get reported to the Treasury, U.S. Treasury. And so we did have time deadlines for our final reporting. So right now, what we're working on uh, is to kind of coordinate all of that uh, um, with uh, not only the enterprises, but other entities. So in our written report, we spell that out. Um, obviously, um, there, if you recall during those times, uh, the time was condensed, um, everything went fast. So a lot of our subrecipients, um, sometimes they, they couldn't report um, as required by the subrecipient agreements and everything, because everything was going so fast. Um, uh, so in uh, the memo, we have a summary of the projects um, and then listed there would be not just our enterprise, but our other entities that receive sub awards. Um, and then you'll see, it'll start with the NET College. We have NTU, the Native Broadcast Enterprise, Rama School Board, and we have a list of NTUA uh, and the various projects. We have Alamo Navajo School Board, Canincito Board of Navajo Health Center, Fort Defiance Indian Hospital Board, Rama Navajo School Board, Navajo Health Foundation, Sage Memorial, Tuba City Regional Health, Utah Navajo Health System Incorporated, Winslow Indian Healthcare Center, and Talani Lake Enterprises. And then um, uh, this is, I'm um, looking at page two, the list of projects. Um, uh, obviously some of these are from HCOC, you know, to the 638 health care facility type uh, sub awards to the various projects. NTUA has uh, seven of them listed um, that everybody is aware of. And then we have some of the uh, college and university support, um, broadband, and so forth. So on the next column, you'll see the award amount. Um, and you'll see this after uh, some reversions has taken place. Um, for example, NTUA be, uh, reverted, um, I believe, 31, 34 million altogether. Um, on projects that at that point in time, they, they could not um, even begun, um, even though they were awarded. So um, the, all of those things, they got reverted back to the hardship program. So um, the total amount is 142,453,843. Those are the awards. Um, and then in the next column over, uh, I, it shows the um, what's been reported to us um, as of uh, yesterday or today. Um, so what's been reported to us is 60,827,722. Um, and so uh, we're still working through because we have until the end of March to, to, to um, work through all of these. Um, obviously, uh, if they, any one of these entities have amounts that they haven't spent, um, the, the time for them to expend those dollars was December 28th, um, then uh, they would need to re uh, revert that to us um, so it can go into the hardship. Um, keep in mind, though, that uh, um, especially as to uh, NTUA, um, they, they're all unique in a sense that uh, they are doing a lot of projects. And then I think we discussed this on council floor about how uh, when we are doing projects, then you have subcontractors and so forth, vendors. And so all of those, their invoices have to trickle up to NTUA and then up to us. And so that takes a little bit of time. 
Um, given that the federal uh, extension happened, um, you know, we're not as crunch because we we probably would have a little less than a, a couple of days to do that if there was no federal extension, given also there's what we call the liquidation period. So we're in the liquidation period, essentially. Um, so the enterprises, as well as these other entities, they're, if they're, that's why you see the difference between 60.8 million and 142 million. Um, so far, um, what's included in my memo also is that by, by the subrecipients, you'll see some notes on what we're finding. Um, um, for example, uh, some of the things we have are things that are unallowable. Let's say they're, whether they inadvertently, you know, put it in their reporting or not, if we find out that they're using CARES money for uh, a, a, an agreement, a multi-year agreement, obviously that wouldn't be allowable, not only under federal law, but Navajo law. So then um, we're looking at those types of um, report reporting. Um, and so uh, for the most part, um, most of them are, their reporting is uh, pretty much completed. We have a few remaining questions on some of them. Um, I think the biggest one would be in TUA uh, and, and if they give their report later on, they, they can explain on some of these, but again, keep in mind that they have numerous uh, projects going on. So a lot of this, uh, we're still in liquidation, essentially trying to square up. They're gonna square up with their vendors and, and subcontractors. And obviously if they have subcontractors like NECA, then NECA has to square up with their vendors. It's that trickle down, trickle up effect that needs to take place. And it needs to take place um, pretty soon. Uh, we did meet with NTUA and put some deadlines um, as to, uh, because they receive the, the most CARES dollars and then they're charged with the most projects, uh, then um, we have to uh, make sure that we get all the reporting done, all the liquidation, getting squaring up with everybody done and so forth. So um, uh, the other, the 638, um, we, we pretty much have everything subs completed. The only other one uh, uh, of concern would be the Tolani Lake Enterprises. Um, I understand there may be some things going on uh, with their uh, key personnel. But um, but we did heard from the inner that uh, particular entity, and so uh, we will be working with them as well uh, regarding their final reporting and whether they have any uh, dollars that needs to be reverted. And um, the only other thing is NGC. We're going through reviewing their final reporting. We're working with them um, on some of these things. We have to look through what we call the period of performance, meaning uh, if they have invoices that are outside the, you know, let's say invoices from January, um, then those aren't allowable. So we have to make sure that um, they're, they're putting in for expenditures that are allowable. So those are the things that um, from our, from OOC's perspective that we're working on regarding the various entities. So um, I think that's all I have on, on from OOC's standpoint. Um, so uh, Ede, uh, if there's any questions, let me know. I can't. Okay, thank you for that report from uh, the Office of the Control. We have uh Navajo uh NTUA on the line. Um are you available in NTUA? I think I heard Arash. Navajo Travel Utility Authority. 
Are you on the line? What about Naval Engineering Construction Authority? Yes, Mr. Chair, this is Brett with NECA. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, go ahead, sir, uh, on the report to the committee. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman and honorable, <clears throat> honorable Budget and Finance Committee members and inviting guests. Uh, my name is Brett Grubbs, I'm the General Manager of Navajo Engineering Construction Authority. Um, I do have some reports. However, uh, the controller was talking about enterprises that were sub-recipients. I want to remind everybody on the call that NECA was not a sub-recipient for any of the CARES Act funding. Um, NECA was <clears throat> contracted by DCD and contracted by NTUA to perform various projects uh, that directly were effect of the CARES funding, but we were not, uh, so to speak, a CARES subrecipient of that funding. So we actually provided goods and services for the money. Um, if you would like, I can go through what we've done with that CARES funding, um, and I would start with the, the contract that we did with uh, DCD. Um, the total funds that were contracted to NECA through DCD were for bathroom additions. Uh, the total contract amount to NECA was $2,267,266. We also had six Navajo Nation Priority One subcontractors, and that total was $1,332,109. So the total amount contracted to NECA through DCD was $3,599,375, and there was 65 bathrooms completed. Um, another contract, like I just mentioned, it was through NTUA. And what they did, <clears throat> NTUA contracted NECA to perform various water and wastewater projects. So along with the bathroom additions, <clears throat> we all know that there are cistern and septic and water line services that need to be provided. Um, the contract amount uh, through NECA for these services was $5,524,607. We also had <clears throat> an additional six Priority One Navajo subcontractors, and that total fund was $962,596 for a total of $6,487,204. That, those two projects went hand in hand because without the bathroom additions, um, you can't have one without the other. So you needed water. That was for the cisterns, and some of these were for water lines uh, extensions. And then obviously for the the septic, for the drain system, for your the restroom, uh, they all go hand in hand. So that there was 86 cisterns complete, 93 septic tanks completed and 21 water line extensions that were completed during that time. And <clears throat> all of these numbers are based on what the controller said through December 28th of last year. Uh, we turned everything in by December 28th because uh, the controller had a deadline of, I think, December 30th. So we wanted to make sure that uh, everything was in there. there was, there's also another list of projects there was a sewer lagoon expansion in Pinon. There's a Halchita water treatment plant. Uh, we're refabbing two tanks, one in Winter Rock and the Slick Rock A tank. We're also doing water line extensions and us utility hookups at Park Estates. We replaced a, a, a PRV in Kinlichi. Um, there was also a sewer line that was broken and needed repair in Tehachi. That was also completed. 
we ran and tied in the two tanks at Lower Greasewood. We also worked on <clears throat> tank repairs at Newcomb. Uh, there was a water line leak on the Shiprock Bridge right here in Shiprock that crosses the San Juan. That was included. And there was water hauling to pay for the initial water hauling to test all of these systems. Um, we also provided all of the, the homeowners that received a bathroom addition and a cistern, we provided them a 250 gallon water hauling tank so they can haul their own water. Um, we also hooked up, I wanna say 32 sinks and water heaters along with 32 water line extensions. All of that work was started and worked through December 28th, and that total bill was $3,724,885. So it's taken some time to get everything together, uh, and I can provide all of this stuff electronically if people would like to see it. I just need everyone's email. Uh, I don't have some of the uh, committee members' emails. So if I get that information, I can definitely email these figures to everyone. Um, it's, it's been a very, it's been some uh, projects that we got very excited about because it literally changed and affected people's lives. Uh, when people have never had water and, and, and a bathroom, um, it was very exciting for NECA to get out there and do these projects. Uh, unfortunately, there was two winter storms that, that hampered progress uh, as we have one right now, but uh, it was nice to see that we were out there doing that. We're continuing to talk with DCD to continue this bathroom con addition construction uh, with some, ne some New Mexico outlay, capital outlay funding. So our goal is to continue serving the people that we can out there until everyone is uh, has water in a bathroom. Um, that is everything that I have. I can answer any questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Chair, sorry to interrupt, but Interior was on mute, but we're on the line. Okay, uh, refer this to Interior. Just, uh, you're on the line now. Sure. Uh, Chair Hanio and members of the Budget and Finance Committee, um, this is R.S. Mualami, General Counsel for NTUA, and I'll provide the update for the NTUA uh, slash Navajo Nation CARES Act projects under uh, C legislation CJY-67-20. So under CJY-67-20, um, NTUA was awarded a little over $147 million dollars to construct projects and provide services um, and all in the name of preventing the spread of COVID-19. So specifically, um, NTUA had seven expenditure plans, um, water, wastewater, um, the disbursement, or the, 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 um, the award was for 18.6 million, for electric capacity was 22.4 million, um, electric connections to families was 13.9 uh, million, um, Salt Springs South electric power line extension was 850,000, uh, broadband projects uh, was 35.1 million. Uh, Off-grid solar units was 35.2 million, and cistern systems was a little uh, less than 21 million. Um, so, as you might recall, um, under legislation CN-89-20, um, the legislation was slightly amended in various ways um, to to provide more flexibility for at least NTUA to move funds within expenditure plans. And I think, um, I think one of the things that I want to talk about is when we provided the listing in May um, to, to the council, I think nobody really understood what, not what we're getting ourselves into, but it, it's, a, it's a one of a kind type of project and, and um, you know, legislation. So um, we provided our listing of projects we expected to complete, um, not knowing the full ramifications of some of the um, treasury guidance guidelines and also the changes within the Treasury guidelines as well on the federal side and on the nation side as well. 
Um, so I'll give you just a project breakdown for NTUA at a high level. Um, we do provide weekly uh, updates to leadership, and I want to make sure that I hope that everyone receives those weekly updates as far as projects are concerned. And if you want more detailed, a more detailed uh, project listing based on chapter and delegate, we also have that as well. Okay. So as of uh, the end of December for, the pro for NTUA's projects um, on the electric connections, NTUA was originally, uh, the goal originally was to connect 510 families to the electric grid, and um, NTUA uh, exceeded that goal, and we connected 713 families to the electric grid. Um, of, that 700, of those 713 families, 664 families were by um, NTUA crews, and 49 families were connected by neighboring utility crews. And what I mean by that is NTUA collaborated with um, Continental Divide, um, Jemez Electric, um, who else was it? Um, Arizona Public Service Company, and also uh, Socorro Electric. So those are other electric utility providers on the nation. Um, so NTUA is not the only utility provider on the nation. Those other utilities provide um, util electric services in other areas. What we did is we were collaborating with them, and we used our CARES Act funding to work with them and fund the connections uh, to, those, uh, to, to those utility um, systems and, and those Navajo families. Um, so that's on the electric side. On the um, off-grid solar side, um, NTUA's original, uh, the, the number of connections that NTUA uh, was, was shooting for was 300 families. 40 uh, units were designated for veterans. And 300 of those units were deployed, um, and NTUA is in the process of um, kind of closing out the of closing out the work orders on the off-grid residential solar units. On the electric capacity projects, NTUA completed 120 electric capacity projects out of the 151 projects that were originally on the list. Um, so we uh, we came up a little bit short there, but uh, there are some issues with weather delays and some other issues that I wanted to talk about as well. Um, on the water and septic systems, um, 122 families were qualified. NTOA along with NECA, so NTOA collaborated and partnered with NECA to uh, to uh, complete these water systems, septic systems, and 170 projects were completed. Um, 76, 70, 46 bathroom additions at the time were completed. Um, 68 cistern systems were installed and 68 septic systems were installed as well. On the electric side, um, as part of the septic and cistern system, there, there needs to be a power source. So um, 89 um, of the total qualif qualified homes um, were receiving power from NTUA. And the other 23, I believe, uh, were receiving solar units for the water and septic systems. Um, NTUA also worked, collaborated with NECA to complete 28 waterline connections and 25 septic systems. Uh, and those are waterline connections directly to homes and a septic system installation directly to the home as well. Um, on the water wells and water system upgrades, uh, NTUA uh, replaced, uh, provided, or did a motor and pump replacement for 64 out of the 64 targeted wells that int it intended to complete. Um, NTUA completed well renovations on eight of the 20 water well projects, and there are also three water well pump replacements as well. Um, as uh, Mr. Grubb said, uh, there was a lot, there was a few projects that, uh, or actually quite a few projects that NTUA collaborated with NECA on, um, specifically the Park Estates project, where we there was construction to replace about 27,000 feet of water line for the Park Estates projects near uh, Sanders, Arizona, and Phase One and Phase Two were completed. Um, additionally, uh, there was repairs and upgrades to six regional water loading stations. Four were in Arizona, two were in New Mexico, um, and I have the specific locations on those. Um, we completed construction on nine new water loading stations um, in Cameron, Fort Defiance, Greasewood Springs, Kinlachi, White Cone, Chilchimbato, Inscription House. And we also completed construction at two um, in, on the New Mexico side of the water loading stations in Crown Point and Pueblo Pintado. Um, NTUA completed the eight of the ten major water system improvements um, in Chinle, Kinlichi, and Navajo. Four of those were in New Mexico, two were in Church Rock, one was in Iambato, and another one in Ojo Encino. 
and another water system improvement project in Mexican Hat. And on the broadband side, on the student Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, the, those are the Wi-Fi hotspots where students can, uh, can either download their homework or turn in assignments um, through virtual learning at these student Wi-Fi hotspots, where individuals can do like telemedicine and telehealth at these spots and you know, check for COVID-19 results online or electronically as opposed to doing phone calls. Uh, 42 hotspots were um, connected in various communities throughout the Navajo Nation. And we anticipated, we went over our goal. I think the original number, number was about was 35, and we were able to connect 42 with some amendments uh, that was approved by council, which we appreciate. On the, uh, furthermore, on the telecom side, um, of the 182 broadcast stations that we received funding, um, NTUA placed in service 82 of those. Um, four of them were not, we, we couldn't place in service because the tower wasn't structurally sufficient to support the additional um, equipment. And then on the tower construction, um, the Pinedale Tower was the first uh, tower under the CARES Act to be completed and it was commissioned on October 12th. There's also the Summit East and Wood Spring Towers that were completed and commissioned. And then there's also the, the Clavico Tower that were having a ribbon cutting, I believe, on Thursday um, that was part originally part of the CARES Act. So these are all the towers that we were able to build and construct within the short time frame um, uh, within the CARES Act. Um, additionally, there's a multi-segmented uh, fiber project in Tuba City. Um, there's eight components of those. Um, so NTUA uh, completed those uh, Tuba City fiber uh, builds within the Tuba City area. And then lastly, NTUA also completed a fiber line from Kaibato to the, the city boundaries uh, within um, the near the NGS uh, former NGS um, generating station. So in a nutshell, those are all the projects that NTA completed in its short period of time. Um, you know, there was a many <laughs> challenges. Um, m the main challenge that NTA faced, and I'll talk about that a little further, was the time that the very short stringent time frame that we were um, under. Um, so I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit further down the line. Um, but on, on January 19th of 2021, NTUA returned and reverted $34,051,578 of unspent Navajo Nation CARES funds to the nation. Um, and, uh, you know, that money was reverted to the, or we believe was reverted to the NTUA Hardship Fund um, as pursuant to the legislation. And as Controller Kirk uh, stated, the, that money was essentially so with a tight time frame. We essentially, our main goal was to finish, our, was to build and construct these projects, and then now we're working on closing out these projects. That $34 million that we returned is projects that we knew we weren't going to complete or we didn't even start within the CARES Act, so we knew right off the bat that we can return that money and, you know, put it towards the hardship right away. Okay, and since, uh, you know, into 2021, NTOA is still finishing up the projects that we started. Um, we don't want to just leave a project out there and not complete it. Um, there's been delays. Um, I can say that on pretty much every single, in every single area, there has been delays due to COVID-19, whether it be um, logistics delays because of logistics of, um, you know, a supplier um, and a manufacturer having a COVID-19 outbreak and they can't get us parts or materials quick enough. Um, even trucking companies having to be shut down because of COVID-19. Um, NTOA internally, um, you know, we didn't shut down. We kept on working. So, you know, here and there we had COVID-19 incidences which delayed and, you know, certain crews were, have, were, were had to stay home um, due to COVID-19. So in every facet, there were delays due to COVID-19. And, you know, with the tight time frame, it, it just made it much more difficult to um, complete all the projects within the tight time frame. So currently, so NTOA originally received $147 million and it returned about $34 million, which means that we have about $113 million remaining. So currently, um, or as of last week, NTUA expects to expend approximately $79 million of the $113. Um, so we're still in the process of closing out all the work orders, as I stated and Ms. as Controller Kirk stated as well. Um, I think one of the questions that's asked and, you know, that I have to, that the team is asked too is, you know, what is the reasoning for not returning the funds sooner. And there's, uh, you know, there's uh, many reasons why. 
Um, you know, we did return the $34 million um, initially in January because we knew we weren't going to complete those projects right off the bat. Um, but uh, furthermore, you know, the tight time frame opposed under, you know, the legislation, um, it was signed into law in, in August of 2020. Um, we've got to go through the Navajo Nation procurement process for any type of the bids over and awards over $50,000. So we really didn't start on projects uh, like, for example, the solar units until October. We couldn't even procure materials until um, mid to late mid October because of uh, the procurement process and then the disbursement of funds. Um, so another challenge we had was delays in the receiving fu of funds and, you know, Controller Kirk in our office, um, Baker Tiller were super helpful. Um, I think it was a huge endeavor by um, everybody across the board. Um, but at a, at a point, NTOA initially had to self-fund projects because of, um, you know, didn't receive the money yet. So as part of that, um, you know, we can only self-fund up to a certain amount. So after that, we had to wait for the, you know, for the disbursement of funds to come in, which delayed some of our project implementations. Um, so that was one of the other challenges we face as far as um, the procurement process and then delays in receiving funds. And therefore, you know, we had contractors wouldn't start until they received the funds. Um, another challenge or barrier was the rights of way. Um, you know, it, during the time, some of the Navajo Nation offices were closed. Um, there were COVID-19 issues. So it took a little bit longer to, to for certain for certain departments to respond to you know SLA and rights of way requests, so that was a delay in some of our projects. Um, and then I think the one positive or the, the positive that I wanted to focus on is you know the efficiency and the savings um, through the process um, NTUA and you know working with NECA, working with our outside um, vendors, many of which were Navajo. We were able to create some efficiencies in how we operated and the scheduling and processes, which created um, some of the savings. So as we're looking at the numbers now, um, as an example, um, in the electric connections, we connected about 120% of the initial target of 510 homes, but we only spent 55% um, of the awarded dollars. So essentially we were awarded, you know, 513.9 uh, million to connect 510 homes, and we connected 700 homes or 600 homes with $7 million. So those are some of the efficiencies and savings that we realized um, and we've kind of noticed after we're finishing up the reporting. Um, and, and, you know, we're currently finishing up the reporting now. Um, you know, some of the other things that I wanted, to, lastly, what I wanted to talk about is, you know, the... Um, as of February, as of this month, NTUA has created savings, um, and we still have approximately $34 million remaining in CARES Act funding. Now, we believe that money we're not going to be able to – we can't, but pursuant to the legislation, we can't use that money for any more projects because we had a deadline within the CJY 6720 legislation. Um, so that money um, – we did have conversations with um, – our office did have conversations with Controller Kirk – um, and I wasn't on the call, but I believe uh, Blaine from Baker Tilly was also on the call. Um, so there's $34 million that we still have of unspent funds um, that we have to return. Um, and through the process, what we've noticed is we haven't hit all the homes and families. There, there's still many families out there that are in need, desperate need of water cut lines, um, sewer, and electricity. So I'll give you an example on the power side. We've connected 719 homes. We currently have a list of over 500 names of families that are pretty much ready to receive utility serv or electric services. Um, this isn't just a random list of you know names of you know inquiries. This is names that we vetted out, and there's over 500 names that we've already vetted out. We've already started the rights of way on, and they are they have been determined to be feasible to receive electric electricity services. And, you know, we're getting names, you know, by the day from delegates and from chapter officials of, you know, individuals who are in need of electricity. And then same on the water side. Um, we're getting names of families who are in need of water line um, connections, um, uh, sewer services or, or septic. 
so it's something that we're still looking at um, on the water side as well. So on a daily basis, we're getting names of family of um, from delegates and you know chapter officials of individuals who are in desperate need of of water as well. And then also on the broadband side, you know we're getting inquiries again from delegates and chapter officials for you know asking how we can you know build a cell tower or you know Wi-Fi hotspot in their area. So you know there's plenty of need out there still. Uh, we do have very, uh, I think through this exercise, we do have good information as far as homes and families that can be connected with water and electricity in the very near future, meaning by before the end of this year easily. So that's something that's a big benefit of the whole project is that we have names out there and, um, you know, and information about feasible projects that we can build uh, very quickly as well as other, you know, construction of cell towers or, you know, Wi-Fi hotspots. We've done our due diligence with, um, with those studies as well. Um, so I know that uh, we have to talk with further, but based on the information we've obtained and, you know, in talking to certain delegates and, le and Navajo leadership, um, we were planning to present uh, proposed legislation to provide additional Navajo families access to basic utilities to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. And, you know, this is all preliminary and we're trying to understand if there's what the appetite is for the council and leadership, which uh, we, you know, there's some, some discussion we f have to further have, but, you know, NTUA strongly believes that it can connect 700 families with electricity by the end of the year. Um, it intends to con uh, continue to partner with CDC, APS, Socorro Electric, and Hamas Electric to provide funds to those utilities to connect NABO families. And we're targeting, targeting about 50 to 100 homes within the other utilities um, service territory. Um, we're looking to install and commission about 100 to 150 off-grid solar units to Navajo families. Um, on the solar units, there was plenty of need for the off-grid solar units. However, the biggest challenge was, and the hurdle was the timing. Um, we, didn't, we didn't receive, and this is no, through no fault of anybody, I think it's just the, the circumstances. Um, you know, we only had we got the funding from the nation in October and it takes about six weeks for these, um, for these parts for the off-grid solar units to come in. So we had a very short time frame to have our contractors and vendors um, commission and put those units in service. If, you know, if, if the, if this legislation, if there's any traction on this legislation, we would have much more time to build out the 100 to 150 off-grid solar units. Um, and then on the waterline connections, um, you know, we're looking, we have a list of, a strong list of at least 100 families that are in need of um, waterline connections. Um, but we want to be, our goal would be to connect uh, 150 families with uh, water. Um, and then, you know, build additional water loading stations and making improvements to our water and wastewater facilities to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And then, of course, there's obviously need on the broadband side, but developing a broadband plan um, to um, increase access to um, Internet, access to broadband services across the Navajo Nation. Um, so that's, that's what our thought is, um, and I think there's obviously much discussion to be had about that. But once again, I think through this exercise, there's plenty of names, there's plenty of Navajo families and individuals that are still in need of of electricity, of water, access to water, access to wastewater, uh, broadband, and the like. Um, so that's something that we're, we're looking at. Thank you. Thank you for that report. Uh, committee members, is there a motion to accept the report? Elmer, people gay. Make a motion. Uh, Yellow Elmer, Harris, Tucky. Okay, motion. Second, second. Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. With that, committee members, any questions or comments regarding the presentation? Chair. And that delegate Chair. Elmer Begay, go ahead. Thank you, Madam. If you had to tell the other members of the Budget Finance Committee, um, on the Budget Finance Committee, though, if you had though, we all know that we have a um, authority over um, finance regarding um, funds that are being allocated 
internal and external funds that goes to the Neville Foundation. And we're accountable for to make sure that these funds go to our the community, especially projects for a community that needs uh, the people that are in need to make sure these funds reach or deliver to their to, to their to their home and to as a as a service and goods that has been served to them. It is or we are accountable for it. I really appreciate the, the, um, the being uh, mindful about it. The, uh, the, the, the questions always um, it means a lot to, 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 as I listen to your questions, the way you direct questions regarding finance and call. If you have any questions for our budget and finance committees, members of the Senate, so um, my question goes to um, Shema, uh, Ms. Kirk. You provide us this um, um, report, just like how the other delegates, BNF uh, members in the media, uh, shared it with their appreciation for the amount of time that you put in to give us this good report. It's a really good understanding, beginning to understand some financing about it. And then you're being very patient with us. Uh, then with your, uh, then Roberts, uh, Mr. Willie too, you know, you know, giving us a good uh, educational understanding of, of, of this financing. So if or, or all your hard work that you are uh, providing, you give us this report called Shahat and then you've been there uh, helping us you know, with all the financing and the way the, the money is supposed to be spent and the, all the contingency that goes with it, restriction that goes with it, with this money, how this money is to be spent. So, I don't know, I can't say much more. The way you, the, I don't need to ask you, I don't need to ask you, I don't need to ask you, you know, you're, 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 you're like that too, based off and then again, because with, you, with all your, um, 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 credential that you have, they say, I respect that. I want to kiss you. 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 I want to give us this report. So the only thing that uh, I have here under the report that you gave us is summary of Subrecipients projects for Kage. Called, um, I know that uh, NTA, Naval Tribal Tilt Authority, is under there, but NECA, um, Naval Engineer Construction Authority, IPA, has been called, they have been called, they have been called, they have been called, So then um, listen to NTA Araj, so I think that he made that. Saying that he got 147 million a call. What you gave us is 142 million for car call. Because the Khalid Ali figures he did So that will be my question. The Shema call. I don't get that. And then also the, I understand that. Uh, NECA is going to be providing some reports of what they did. Thank you that you'll be providing from NECA, providing that report to us. Um, so we were already expecting that um, hard copy. And then to Araj, uh, uh, from, from NTA to... Um, I know I read all your uh, um, reports from um, Heather. Other clause which you provide that, which is, um, I really appreciate that, and I try to share it with all my um, my constituents regarding that. And then I really, uh, uh, I understand, and then I really agree with you that we still need a lot of um, um, electric connection to, to the people that I serve here. Some of them are already, but some of them uh, don't have hot wiring. 
I was always thinking that uh, the how you could uh, maybe the hire some uh, local uh, electrician uh, business people, business owners to do the house wire for you, then they got the to do the line extension. You know, that I always think about it. So I don't know how we can work that the, the third third four million dollars that that you see a balance for you. So uh, I agree with you that you know that the, um how it can be work out there to to, to, to continue to um, give you that uh, thirty four million dollars. Maybe with Ellis or the, maybe the Arashi can give us another um reports I don't know how uh, I, I I believe that I made a uh, request through Heather saying that you know, I know that this is overall that you guys uh, you know, report on the reservation, but can you concentrate more on maybe the District 7 area uh, or my chapter, the five chapters that I represent, see how many the projects were done and see how many the still needs um, Electric connection. Maybe there will be a report. Maybe I can work with you separately on it. Thank you for that. I'm just seeing you're not for that a question. Um, uh, any other questions or comments, committee members? Uh, further, uh, yeah, uh, yes, it's a little, uh, brother, chair. Yeah, I Go think ahead. again, again, Anna, thank you very much, uh, NTUA, to discuss of your um, projects and going on for a uh, the Navajo Nation under all 110 chapters. What about Anna? Either, uh, I have a uh, one issues in Black Mesa that the uh, over at Rocky Pie really needs electricity. He lives about maybe three miles away from power line. Hope that one of these uh, your project is in the project for Black Mesa in the area. But, but thank you very much. Uh, we had 1.4 million that was. Uh, used for citizen fun and went from Black Mesa all the way up to uh, almost up to Peabody and there's that part lines up there right now so we, we spent all the money uh citizen fund that was under 100 million dollars that project is completed and was raised good significance and the Navajo up there is really happy about the power line but on the other side Mr. Roger Bai still needs a power line that is just a uh, remind that's all uh Hey, Ross, yeah, thank you very much for your team and TUA. I want to say, other than that, there's a lot of work needs to be done. Thank you, yes, to the chair, vice chair, Shanat Ah, Honorable Councilman, being a committee man. Um, committee, yeah, thank you very much. I want to say, thank you, Shanat, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, back to you, uh, Shimon, Ms. Perlin Kurt, uh, if you have a response to the uh, the uh, questions from the Budget and Finance Committee or comments? Um, <clears throat> um, Siad, uh, Chair, and then members of the Budget and Finance Committee, Otto, um, Siad, uh, Delgate, Elmer Piquet, um, the report with my memo, ADGA subrecipient, Sikide Ya Yahatne. So um, as for NECA, ADKA, they weren't a subrecipient, which they explained earlier as well. Um, so <clears throat> um, the way in, uh, NECA um, was able to use CARES funding was uh, providing goods and services directly either to NECA, um, NTUA, as NTUA is a subrecipient. So auto NTUA Ajika base of a in a form of a grant. Auto NTUA auto they contract it with NECA to provide 
um, goods and services. So they were a vendor for NTUA with the money that we granted them. So Hotel Eya. Um, auto, the other way is, uh, I believe it's six, uh, CJN-47-20, um, with a bathroom addition that was administered by DCD. Um, Ajiko Eya in TUA was uh, basically a subcontractor, a, a vendor to the nation through DCD. So um, the amount that got, I believe the amount that got reverted was approximately 1.2 million. So it need to share your account So um, but they aren't on my list because my list only covered what we call the subrecipients. Um, so, Otto, um, on my on my list uh, um, on page two of my memo, which has the list of subrecipients and the projects. I think your question was. I know Intiwe uh, Arash said something about 147. Total is what what they've received, but if you look down in my uh, my list, uh, the award amount. I just want to point out that that amount is different because um, uh, this didn't include the amount that uh, in two way uh, um, right before de December. At some point in time, they said the deadline's coming up, and we're not going to use. Um, the, the amounts that we were awarded. So that they reverted back to us and it was approximately 34 million total. Um, so if you add their amounts here, uh, starting with 15 million, there's seven of them all the way to 33. If you add theirs plus the 34 million, that should add up to 147. Um, and then on top of that, they're telling you that um, because we're squaring up um, a lot of these invoices, um, they may revert um, an additional 40, uh, I'm sorry, 30, 33 million possibly. And so, um, and so just wanted to make sure you understand that. Otto, at this point in time, I just wanna mention I know our office, we've done a memo uh, and I know uh, at the national level, at the federal level, um, there is still talks about additional CARES dollars. Um, I know the number to keep in mind is 20 billion for tribes. Um, and if you kind of think about it, this past round of CARES dollars where we got 714 million, uh, the tribal allocation was approximately 8 billion. Um, I know that the litigation regarding the ANCs, um, I believe the US Supreme Court uh, took that up. And so um, there's still some money tied up for that, but um, where we were talking about 8 billion for tribes this, this past round, for the next round, uh, I'll call it the next round. Um, we're looking at 20 billion for tribes. Um, we don't know how it will be allocated and so forth. So we'll go through the same exercise as what we went through last year around March, between March to May, uh, when uh, last year, if you recall that we were dealing with providing uh, key information from ours, um, anywhere from census to uh, employee data and so forth. So we'll probably go through the same exercise. Um, so there will be additional, we think additional CARES funding down the pipeline. So I just wanna make sure every the committee is aware of that as well. So those are my responses. If I missed a question, um, let me know on that. Auto yeah.
Chair Hindio, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm here. I was um, wondering what happened, but okay. Back to the committee, Budget and Finance Committee. Are there any further questions or comments? I have to now call for the question on accepting the report. Chair uh, Hindio, I, I wanted to answer. I wanted to answer. Uh, Who's this? Delegate Elmer Begay. This is um, Arash with NTUA. Oh, go, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, real quick, on the I know uh, Honorable Delegate uh, Elmer Begay asked about Navajo um, contractors, and I didn't answer that question. So for this project, uh, and I, this is this information can be released because is it's it's a federal project, uh, but a priority one uh, vendor or contractor, Gilbert and Sons, was awarded a contract for 150 solar units, and the total contract amount uh, is approximately five million dollars. And then NTUA did also hire, um, also use uh, various um, house wiring electricians and contractors, um, namely Innovative Electric, who had 10 employees who were Navajo. Uh, Gilbert Sons had 37 employees. I think the majority of them were Navajo. Uh, we also did have a contract with Navajo Electric for house wiring. And then an outside company was National Power Line. So they're not a priority one or priority two company but the majority of their workforce, they did hire from the Navajo Nation. I just wanted to report that. Thank you. Thank you for that response. Uh, that committee members, if there are no further questions or comments, I will for the question. Chair, Chair. Go ahead, Can you hear me, Chair? Go ahead. Uh, Doug, Elmer, begin. Go ahead. Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, uh, go ahead. You, we can hear you. Okay. I guess you know that. Um, um, if you had uh, to select other the members of the uh, budget finance committee, other also the uh, Shamado. Thanks for explaining that to me, um, for the understanding of the uh, you know, financing. Um, I don't think that I, uh, you explained it that again, that, that uh, if there's another CARES funding becoming available, so either day, yeah, you uh, explained it to us again too. So, um, so we had to get uh, the, for, for your understanding, so, um, the terrorist funding to hear that the one that sub to hear the yeah that's what you actually um, shared it with us. So in order to get the the part that the vision of community development go yeah we have to go through um um a vision of community development or O O O M B to give us that uh, full report that you gave us like the way you gave us. Hold on, this is that would be my question. So, hold on, I think um, I would need that information again, though, because I know that um, I'm trying to get to where people that are, the people are in remote areas that are still need some um, solar units and people that are still need some water in this area. And that's a a a you see the yeah a yeah a I want some some information um how that a hey yeah or is uh even yes just it just snuggle see then my chapters are going through some assessment uh we gave each new new chapter just of that uh, they need to do their homework see how many people are out there that's without water that's without electricity. So um, that's what we're doing right now to make sure that these people that are, I see the people that are not, not will not get any uh, electric. We're trying to help them out to how they can get um, electricity. Because we're saying that we're trying to do this in the pandemic. Uh, I 
ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็ก็
uh, maybe get together with, with uh, who who will be the technical person that we could talk to, and then uh, Arash too. I thought, uh, or um, I wanted to know that um, I know that there's some already um, right of ways that was made through some. Um, there was already some um, uh, funding that were allocation ready for construction from um, um, under the community development block grant, and they were ready for it. And these, some of these people, but I don't know how. Is it? Is it? Um, I don't know how we can work together again. They're, they're ready for it, but um, I don't know. Maybe that we need to do some legislation work or go back to RDC, see if they can approve that for us and, or community development. So you know what, which, one, which one I'm talking about. So I don't know if, we, if you have any. I know I requested this through your office before, but I don't know how far you guys work together on it. So that's it, yeah. So it's um, the student. Um, chair, give me more questions. In the chair for that question, uh, maybe uh, Ms. Uh, Perling Kirk, our uh, nomination controller, if you could see if you can answer that question. Um, chair, uh, <clears throat> Otto, members of the Budget and Finance Committee, Otto Shigaj, uh, Delegate Elmer Begay. Um, I think. Uh, what you're asking for is um, if you're asking about um, the particulars on who needs uh, bathroom additions, et cetera, um, that would be geared towards uh, DCD. And I don't know if NECA has anything because they're on the line as well. And then um, anything regarding uh, I mean, anything regarding who needs it and who has received it, I think that would be DCD and NECA, possibly NECA. Um, and then for electricity, um, I think in T-Way would probably be best suited to answer that because I think earlier they were saying they have a list and they have a process. Um, so our office wouldn't have that information. Our office simply keeps track of the financial transactions. So, um, um, so basically, um, we track the, um, the, the, the financial uh, activity. Um, so that's where earlier I was saying that um, in terms of CARES, uh, we, we track the different expenditure plans. There's seven of them. Um, how much was spent, how much was reverted, how much could be reverted again, and then the reporting of all of those things. Um, Otto, uh, regarding the NECA and the bathroom additions, um, that was a, it was administered by DCD. AAAJ, um, that it to um beso cho iniki eya um so auto neka eya straight contracting at the gila so i believe under that um cjn-47-20 i want to say that was three and a half million um and of that um uh i believe 1.2 million was reverted back um, and keep in mind when I say revert it back, anything that gets reverted um, will go into the hardship um, because of the NABI resolution. So this one should have already reverted into the hardship. Um, and then, so that's essentially how it works. Um, our office does, doesn't, we don't, because we don't administer, so we wouldn't know who who is in line to get these you know, electricity or bathroom addition, what that process looks like, um, et cetera. So um, we just follow the funding and I know OMB would just, all their role would be to set up the budgets and so forth once things get um, appropriated and so forth. So I'm not, sh um, I think that was the question was uh, for additional detail information. 
um, and so forth. The only thing I would like to add is um, in the future, if we if there is additional CARES funding, um, uh, we think that um, it will be based on the census numbers. So all the exercise we've gone through with the hardship program, I think it just will pay off because um, we're we have a much better i think we have a much better handle on some of the census data as well so just wanted to add that in terms of my comments regarding additional cares funding that we think is coming down the pipeline so that's my response unless i totally misunderstand the question let me know um auto yeah thank you for that response um back to you um, does that help you with your question? Thank you, uh, Helio. Can you hear me? Oh. I'll be right here. Can you oh, hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sinanta. Uh, uh, I don't that, uh, um, uh, so I'll go ahead. Um, maybe the, um, on this report, um, we can, I can request through, um, Peggy for the next um, meeting, Budget and Finance Committee, to have um, um, NECA and then also the, the Division of Community Development to do a report on the bathroom additions and recording NTA to the um, um, house wiring. Eddie, yes, Eddie. Peggy, did you get that? So for uh, just for clarity, at the March 2nd meeting, you want to hear another report from uh, the Division of Community Development with NECA and also NTUA regarding the all of those um, like power, water, and bathroom additions? Bathroom additions. Addition. Just bathroom additions. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, it, yeah, bathroom additions. Uh, hey, yeah. Uh, uh, house wire too. House wire too. So, so would that include NTUA too? I think um, that's an addition includes a uh, system tank and septic tank insulation. Okay. All righty. Okay, Sheena. Okay, committee members, any further questions or comments? If not, I'll call for the question. Accepting the report. Delegate Jimmy O'Hare. Uh, for the record. Uh, Delegate Jimmy O'Hare votes green. Um, Sinanda, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Shanta, Delegate Amber Canals Nakrati. Uh, Delegate Amber Canals Nakrati. Shanta, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. Go ahead. Okay, so now for the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Uh, so now, uh, Delegate Elmer P. Gay. <clears throat> I vote green. Can you hear me? Okay. For the record, Delegate Elmer P. Gay votes green. Uh, back to going back up, so now, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Nashanata, Delegate Amber Kenneth Makrati. Delegate Amber Kenneth Makrati. With that, we have a break, uh, no tally of three in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Vice Chair Smith and Delegate Amber Kenneth Makrati not voting. With that, I stand off with the report. 
uh, the tourism office in TUAA and NECA uh, for those uh, reports. And let's move forward to uh, the next item that takes care of our reports. <clears throat> and then we take care of no old business, there's none. New business 7A, we took care of that. We just have one more action item, which is uh, scheduling of work session on the February 23rd, 2021 at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, with the NAMO Divis uh, Department of Retirement Services. Uh, can I get a motion, Sunda? Thanks. Budget and Finance Committee. Is Delegate Brown now motion? Okay, Sunda. Delegate Second. Brown motions to uh, Second, Elmer P. P. Gay. Work session. Second by Sunda. Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Uh, there was also um, a purpose that was uh, explained. I am Ms. Uh, Andrea Holmes. So with that, are there any questions or comments regarding the work session? I don't know you will call for the question. Uh, work session, February 23rd, 2021 at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, Sinanta, they'll get Jimmy Yellow here. I'll vote green, thank you. Uh, for the record, they'll get Jimmy Yellow here votes green. I'll uh, ask uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Delegate Amber can announce Bob Crowdy. Uh, Delegate Amber can announce Bob Crowdy. Uh, Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown votes green. And for the record, Delegate Nathaniel Brown votes green. Uh, Delegate Elmer PBA. I'll vote green. For the record, they'll get Elmer P. Begay votes green. Uh, going back up, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, they'll get Ember Knesla Crotty. They'll get Ember Knesla Crotty. With that, we have a vote tally of three in favor. Zero opposed, chair not voting. <clears throat> Vice Chair Smith and Bill Gantner, that's why Cody not voting also. With that, that takes care of our new business item. Uh, close the session and one to written announcements, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? <clears throat> motion. Motion to adjourn by Delegate Brown. <laughs> okay, motion by Santa Delegate Nathaniel Brown. Second by Santa Delegate Jimmy Yellowhead. With that, we do have a motion to adjourn. Um, we do have our next meeting, March 2nd, 2021, which is two weeks from now. Uh, with that, committee members, uh, motion to adjourn at 2.38 p.m. Jimmy O'Hare. There you go. For the record, Delegate Jimmy O'Hare votes green. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. Ashnanta, I'll get Amber to Nelspa Crowdy. They'll get Amber to Nelspa Crowdy. Ashnanta, they'll get Nathaniel Brown. <coughs> they'll get Brown both screen. For the record, they'll get Nathaniel Brown both screen. Ashnanta, uh, they'll get Amber, um, Elmer P. Gay. I vote green. For the record, they'll get Elmer P. Gay votes green. Uh, going back up, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith. And they'll get Amber Kanez Bakrati. They'll get Amber Kanez Bakrati. Now we have a vote tally of three in favor. Is there opposed? Chair not voting. Vice Chair Smith and Delegate Amber to Nesla Crowdy not voting. We are hereby adjourned. Thank you, Shinanta, for oh. uh, having a good, good meeting today. I can't have to chill it. Nathaniel. Thank you, Brown.